We were yeah. going to hell for leather, weren't we? we? Yeah. Yeah. We were on a cart. Or had we left? We town? decided to. Yeah, we were, we decided you had to town. go really fast for one day and then take it easy the day after. Because we figured yeah. that being because there's loads of flying vehicles and stuff around, there's no point taking another route. Because if anyone's following us, they're going to figure. Oh, out way better, Jess. Thank you. Would you do that for yours as well, Gav? Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. I'm just working this out, so. Yeah, that's way better. How's that? I yeah, I didn't even know there was a hand feature in this. I thought that was something you had to add for the card games or something. I, I don't fucking maybe it was de- yeah, top. maybe it was default on the table. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Cool. Thank you. All right now. Rulebook, rulebook, rulebook. Downloads. New Minera. Real D20. This is D20. So you want a chrome one instead? You want a metal one? Shiny and chrome. Yeah, I like the metal ones. What's the D6 for? We haven't used that yet, have we? Um, no, and you basically just... When do you roll D6, actually? I can't remember. I don't know, but I remember reading the start of the book and it said you need a D20 and a D6. You need a D6. Very occasionally you need a... Yeah, so... Is it just for recovery rolls you use a D6? Maybe. D6 is used most often for recovery rolls uh, and to determine the effects of certain Nomenera devices. But also, so certain moves use 1D6 of ammo, for example. Oh, that's the nice. chrome ones roll well. Oh, no, the purple ones roll well as well. Oh, oh 20. That's nice, though. Oh, another 20. Jesus Christ, I'm rolling my luck here. Yeah, I'd start can rolling I, straight can away. I, can I get a third one? 17. That's pretty, oh, fuck. Oh, you, my God. You do yeah, yeah. the game. <laughs> I've just rolled uh, oh, two twenties, yeah, was... a seventeen, and a nineteen. Okay, I'm going to eat a handful of peanuts, and then I'm going to commence narration. Handful of penis. Commence narration. Cool. I got my giant big D twenty now. There we go. Oh wow! Well. Through my dice are on twenties. Ah. Uh. Uh. Experience points. Oh, yeah, yeah, did we add them to our sheet? <coughs> we had one each, didn't we? I don't know. I've you should have one. one of those each. Well, we got some during the game. I don't know if there was more after the game. Or was no, it just you're... during? So there was one GM intrusion, and I gave one to Gex as a combination of um, a, a major effect and because I was feeling nice. Okay. Uh, but I have the card for it. Where did it go on the sheet? Did we write it on the sheet somewhere? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a big, yeah. There's a big oh, one there. Yeah. Kept my. Oh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> yeah. I was just looking like, where did it go? The biggest number on the sheet. <laughs> yeah, because obviously the way the game handles XP is just totally different than every other game. Yeah. Uh, can, can we get rid of these cards? XP they cards. Yeah, they don't like, mean anything else, do they? Um, like, and no, I mean. You, you can, can just tell me I'm going to spend point. it, but you give it, you spend it back to you will yeah. sell it back to me, so to speak. So yeah, okay, I'll keep it as an item then. Yeah, makes more sense. <laughs> Ruby. Okay. Um. So you are riding south from Arilla on the the main kind of commercial road. Um, the countryside is, you know, kind of swiftly and, and quickly moves from from urban kind of um, dense urbana into kind of um, front country in the sense of, of you, you know, you're, you're seeing small little shacks and, and market traders and people that can't quite afford to live in the city or just don't want to, seeing houses dotted here and there into determinedly rural countryside you are out in 
fields of, of um, kind of grassland and, and um, agricultural crop. It is getting late in the autumn, maybe possibly early winter. And as such, some of these fields are being harvested from. Some are already empty and some are full of um, um, produce effectively waiting to be plucked from the land between grounds between between fields between kind of lands of boundary you can see scraps and remnants of the fur of the previous eight worlds a fence might change from you know wooden picketing to sharp rippling wire that no animal would want to go near it looks incredibly dangerous to look for Occasionally, a field will have a steel skeleton of, a, of an old building sticking up out from it. Animals do flick back and forth. There are some which are wild and untamed, rustling through the grasses and the plants looking for seeds or perhaps each other to eat. Birds are plentiful, and frolicking in the warm sunlight that is now coming down upon the road. Traffic is a mixture between obvious merchants and obvious farmers. And though there, there is a level of interaction between the two, a level of nodding and the like. Uh, and then very occasionally you will see other uh, professional travelers, other folks who are more urban based, not dressed for the road, and perhaps people who are members of the tribes, which you find yourselves peripherally now aware of uh, from your encounters in Orilla. Um, Jed, is our, sorry, could you describe our cart again? It, is it an open top? It is a two-wheel thing that's attached it, to it. There are, I can't remember the name of it. Let me get uh, an Anine. So it is, it anine, is a, two, yeah. a two-wheeled cart with um, a kind of short canvas covering over the top. So I am, um, there is enough canvas to cover your luggage, but it isn't hooped in the sense of a kind of covered wagon. Yeah. Um, you so if, if so, you could you could sleep in it or under it because the wheels are quite tall, and there is a kind of bench near the front for two of you to sit. The third and whoever is uh, driving the um, the animal will want to sit up on the saddle that the oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, yeah, yeah that is rigged up to the anine's back. I think um, Gex took the duty I, on that. I, I, I am driving Archibald with my mighty whip. Oh, yes, Archibald. I forgot. Yes, I remember. Driving hell for leather. Well, we um, were for the first day. As we pass one of the um, farmers, especially one of the guys maybe harvesting um, like hay or silage or something. Someone in a field, yeah. Yeah, could we buy like enough hay to cover back of the cart if you know what i mean to make us maybe if it was from the air we'd look like farmers transporting goods or is that pointless like, are you just going to kind of ride up and 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 kind of hassle a guy in his field well hassle is a strong word but you i mean have to pay. <laughs> sorry yeah, what do pay. what does the anine eat could we so it will it will eat um, hang on, what do they? Eat? Let me find like, that out. Probably grain or something, yeah. Or you know, only gex. eats human flesh. Yeah, gexes. Only yeah. eats gexes. I'm okay with that. Well, the the point is, if if we can make our cart look kind of like a farmer's cart on the way to market or yeah. on the way to deliver goods, it, you know, it maybe it'll help. Maybe it won't. Well, we are uh, sorry. We're going fast for the first day, right? And then we, I guess, we sleep and then continue the next day. So we we, we might as well cover it in the night time if we're going to do such a thing. Yeah, so we like disappear off the face of the earth, even if they had seen us. Yeah, yeah, so, I like that idea. And anine will eat kind of mainly grass and leaves, but they will eat kind of small lizards, rodents, or or, or other animals Ooh, as well. That's they a good troll. They are omnivorous. Oh, nice. We'll have to okay. keep this guy. Um, Anyone we need to get rid of, you know. Yeah. Six and in's in a pen. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, if, if we can buy the equivalent of a bale of hay off a farmer. Gex, you're driving? Do you want to stop the cart to do that? 
Yeah, well, I guess we'll do it in the evening now, when it's like getting dark, maybe, when they're about to go home. I can't... Keep, riding, keep riding for a little while longer. It is um, not early, but kind of late morning now. Okay. So the sun, the sun is well and truly on you. It's getting into the hotter part of the day, which isn't particularly hot this time of year. But the sun is is warm. Uh, those of you in the back will will be seeing some some kind of glare and and the spots of ground that are wet, where there is maybe standing water or um, you know flowing water, because you know you're not in a landscape devoid of these things, and farmers need irrigation. Uh, there is there is glare and glisten. Uh, I. I'm not <laughs> not suffering the glare because I have my hat. No, to absolutely. Me. All right, well, I'll bring um, us to a screaming stop near one of these farmers. Like, hold yeah. there, good sir. Uh, good after, good morning. We were just wondering if we could purchase some some hay off your your good self for our travels. Um. So, um yeah, um, you can come to the. The farmhouse. Um, my 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 father handles the business there. Ah, uh, well, well. How about we just strike a deal with you right here? Um. Oh. Uh. And this is this is a kind of young young adult sort of sort of fellow, and he's he's the only man in the field. There is um another animal. It, it, this is a kind of quadruped animal with big hulking flanks of you know um flanks of thigh that is also lugging a, a smaller cart that's you know looking really quite laden up um but he's he's got his pitchfork and he's he's lifting hay up and kind of bundling it in and bundling it in and bundling it in and he's taking his time to string things up and so you've caught him midway through stringing at a bale and he kind of looks down at it and went well um uh i can i mean yeah well we'll lighten your load we'll take that one off your hands how, how much would you normally fetch for that uh oh um and a look kind of crosses his eye do you have any kind of insight skill to work out what he's thinking or i have, I have completely perception. negative i am trained in perception i'll i'll get you guys all to roll an intellect an intellect roll gex i will take you down a difficulty on that okay sam i'm going to put you up a difficulty on that seven i'm socially retarded and partially asleep in the back yeah so fine. i'm, I'm yeah. happy not to roll i got 15 uh, it, the guy seems to be more or less plucking an amount out of his head. He's like, um, uh, three shins. But you kind of get the impression there, Gex, that, that it's like he's, he's just made this. up that number. Yeah, and, and, you know. Well, how about this? We'll give you five and uh, treat yourself and uh, just uh, maybe keep but, quiet if you've seen us. Five shins? Um. Uh, yeah. And he's he he kind of lifts out the bale, and you know he's got good strong arms. He does this all day long, so it's not difficult for him to move it over to you, and just carries it over to the to the side of the road. Cool. Uh, I've, I'll cover this one, boys. <laughs> so yeah, um, who's doing the heavy lifting, Sam? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm just giving my hamster eye drops, but I am listening. Uh, eye drops. What's wrong right with him now? I eat not really well still. Poor little I'll bugger. Jump out and um, spread the hay across the back of the cart over the box that we have the. It's, it's oh, the of course. So we've disguised our cargo. Yes, very good, very wise. And right. then I will prop my head up against it and kind of fall asleep. All right. Thanks very much, young man. You have a have a good day and a fine harvest. Um. Thank you. Uh. Bye. Archibald away. I'll just <laughs> whip Archibald up yeah. and start. Carry on, and it goes rah, and 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 picks Ooh. up the pace that it was at before. Good. Uh, the the the, the anine doesn't seem uncomfortable at all with this kind of pace for the time being, at least. But you don't know quite how long it's going to want to do it for, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you got it going quite fast. Um, regardless, you are able to ride on. You're able to overtake a few folks that. Some people are riding in caravan, riding in convoy. Others, you know, you, you're seeing people riding together, but you've got no idea whether it's just coincidence or, um, you know, whether it's deliberate in any way, shape or form. But some groups you're seeing, they're clearly demarcated by livery or by uniforms or, or something Merchant like that. caravans, likely. That's what I reckon. 
about an hour or so out of Arilla, um, you can see uh, two things kind of coming up past you. The land is not entirely flat, but it's open. The hills are, you know, gentle and rolling. And so you can see quite a way and you'll see ahead of you. Um, what will you see ahead of you? Um, the road has a sharp fork in it. And so you can continue straight south or else it breaks away to the east. Uh, there is a structure established there in, the, you know, just inside the fork, pretty much built into the corner of it, and ruins of another behind it. Um, as you ride up on it, you can see there are several vehicles, several animals kind of stopped inside the fork and, and, and at this um, this structure that's there. Do you, do you guys reckon we should ask for directions, see what's the fastest route? We, we, we know the fastest route, right? It's this straight mm -hmm. south. And as you as you come yeah. up on on this, and actually, if you've travelled in this area before, maybe you'll you'll know about this thing. Uh, this is a spot that is called the Quiet Corner. It is um, okay. there is an inn there. It is a popular kind of roadhouse that people stop. So it's called the Quiet Corner, but really, it's anything but. It's um, it's a very popular way to stay on the on the road, and it's basically acknowledged as the the kind of first um, first spot south of Arilla. Uh, would it be the first spot south of Arilla where you're no longer in the uh, range of the talky thing? That's, that's, that's why that's it's called a good, the quiet yeah. corner. <laughs> that would be a good way to think about that, yeah. That's my, my supposition. Well, guys, do, do, do we want to stop, have a chat with anyone, see what's going on on the road? We'll keep going. I think we'll brave it and push on. Straight yeah. south? Straight south's the quickest way. I... Very well. We continue on the Southern Fork, I guess. Are you going to keep up the fast pace? Well, we said, we I believe we said we were going to go fast pace for the first day. Yeah. 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 So we'll so keep we'll up. Keep, keep up the pace. Keep cracking. I, I'll say a few quiet words of kind of devotion to, um, I don't know, some sort of God of random choice that we've taken the right uh, way. I'll just say a few prayers under my breath. I mean, you did say it was the right way. I hope, I hope you're not well, telling me the right way. things. It's the quickest way, but like, is it the, is right it the way? safest? Exactly. Is it the best way? Yeah, absolutely. And as you come up to the junction there, I'm going to um, just quickly have a GM intrusion there. So <gasps> Sam, will you give one of those cards to somebody and keep one? And I'll tell you exactly why um, as we do this. So um, as you come up to pass by the quiet corner, the inn, you more or less, you, you come up to the right of it, you can see, as I say, in, in great detail, you know, the carts, the vehicles, the the animals moored up outside. And as you go to run perpendicular to the doorway, um, Sam, you find yourself snag, uh, seemingly in the air. And as the cart rides forwards, you do not. It is as though you have hit an invisible wall and find yourself because the cart is going quite quickly, making a speed defense roll. Oh. Uh, Okie dokie. Can I use effort? No, I don't have a thing and I don't have an edge in it. So you can speed. still you can and use you... three points of speed to make to make the, the defense roll easier. Can you speed yeah, three points of that to apply a level of effort. Yeah. And you can spend your XP to re roll. I ain't doing that. Yeah, I'll use three, why not? Uh, what did you so, roll there? A 30 so 13. 13. Yeah. That's fine. And you, you can kind of work out what's going on. And with your phasing, actually hitting the back of the cart slows you ever so slightly. But you go clear through the detritus in the cart, being out of phase ever so slightly yourself, um, and are kind of bounced up into the air, being jostled and having the change in your velocity. Um, and are able to, you know, gain a little bit of extra altitude and land deftly on your feet, uh, and not really actually be hurt. It's quite, um, quite well, dexterous of yourself. Considering and I was half asleep as well. The cart will carry on going. Um, gentlemen, what's that? Uh, I'll look uh, around. I, I will kind of bound up and stand on the see, back of the cart. I can't see anything past the cart, <laughs> so I'll keep going. <laughs> Uh, Gav, you, you, you'll have noticed. Um, Hold up, Doctor. Nope, okay. I'm being, being warped out of the back of the cart. I do what the, in the smeg was that? <laughs> I'll pick up my shield and all kind of 
18 fat stone of me will jump down onto the onto the the road and move towards um Arnold. I'll, somebody uh, somebody wheel else the outside hit it yeah, your turn post. Around. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. There is a, a a man outside of the outside of the inn and he walks up towards you, Sam and says, Oh That was very impressive the way you jumped out of that. Mm. Having a having a thirst, are you? Um <laughs> I'm going to say something like that, apparently. Perhaps I didn't know I wanted a drink. Um, Can I potentially make some sort of intelligence roll to understand what's just happened? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because I'm going to assume this is something possibly phase-related for me to have been touched and no one else, just from my brain hole. So. Uh, an eight. You rolled an eight. So um, it is as though you have hit an invisible wall that doesn't seem to have affected anything else. The man that's just walked up to you in the road is is standing, you know, as if though he would be cut in half by what you've just touched. And yet, you know, as you raise your hand, it's like there is. Um, it's quite a curious feeling for you because it is more solid than anything you've had experience with in some time. Um, you know, you're not used to actually feeling that level of resistance, except for when dealing with things that have um, energy barriers in them. So can I touch it and try and find a way around it? Is this a metaphorical brick wall or is this something solid? That's kind of my thought pattern. So talk me talk me through, you, you want to kind of feel your way along to see if you can find a gap. Yeah. Uh, which way are you going to go? Are you going to go towards the end or away from it? Uh, uh, away, uh, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You can do that. Um. Just randomly, I'm not choosing. Here you go. Yeah. One to three, I go one way. One the other way. So I roll a five. I go towards the end. There we go. You go. You're going to go towards the end. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um. So you you kind of walking along and patting your um your hands on the on this wall, and it it looks to you other chaps who are riding back towards it you won't have seen this in character but you know when mimes are pretending to be trapped behind <laughs> glass yeah yeah it's a little bit like that it's like he's kind of um able to knock on it like it's a wooden panel or something like that. and you can see clean through it there's no kind of even shimmer or or um distortion or anything like that um nor does it make a noise sam but it does feel very much to your hands as though you are tapping on um a glass panel or a glass window is is a good way to put it um you know i make not... my my best curling out a shirt face to try and phase through it like lean into it yeah um <laughs> if i can't and find a gap <laughs> you're just you're just going to kind of push your face into it and like as if I'm trying to squeeze through it, you know, like exert loads of effort, look like I'm coming out of poo as far as they're yeah. concerned, as I try and push through this non existent thing. Yeah, it's it's gonna look quite comical to anybody standing around you and, and you realise that you're getting a weird look from the guy who came from by the inn. And then after a moment he looks down at his own hands and then he turns around and goes back into the inn. Because it's it's like you're pulling some weird circus prank, and then he can't work out how you're making your skin like ripple and flatten in the air like that. Okay, yeah. Uh, what's wrong, Arnold? <laughs> you're playing a I, I can't, buffoon. I can't. I can't walk through this. I don't know what this is, but I can't. I can't pass through. There's a wall here for me. Sound is coming through perfectly fine. So um, Gavin Gex will have you know ridden fairly close to you now, but they're not so close as to. You know they they are close enough to hear perfectly, but they aren't through the the barrier yet. Is so it related to, to your, it's related to your particular ailment? I gather. You mean his lack of a soul? Well, one way. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up to his side of the barrier, Jed. If you know yeah, what I mean, I'll walk sure. up and stand yeah. beside him. Yeah, and um, you don't notice anything, <laughs> you know, that that would you know. Potentially or otherwise, you know, it doesn't impede your movement or um, right, well, you know, sound or feel I'll, like anything. You've just I'll, walked along the road, as far as you can tell. I'll place my big chunky palm on Arnold's back and give him a not so gentle push in the direction of the cart. Now, yeah, um, 
I'm not going to make you roll to hurt Sam, but that does hurt a little bit. It's not going to do damage to you yet, but... Okay. I'm assuming he's just squished me against the wall. Yes. That's a bit, yeah. a bit odd. So now you, now you can feel it. Yeah, Gav, so you, you, you basically feel as though you are pushing Sam against a wall, as, you know, as I say. That must be a sign. Let's go get a drink. Well, I'm, it's a, certainly a clever strategy to get people into this inn if they're uh, if they're out of phase <laughs> with any of their companions. If we just joined a linear video game, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hit the invisible wall. Yeah. wall. Yeah. <laughs> go the other way. <laughs> you hit a load screen. Uh, um, <laughs> mm. right, let's go and see what, see, what, see if anyone else knows anything. I've, else. I'm gonna get my bubble wrap out and sit there popping it, pondering what the fuck is going on. We'll try and walk that way out into the field. I point away from the inn. I will do that. See if you can get around it. Yeah. I'll spend like minutes trying to find a way around, Jed. Is that yeah. possible? So eventually you kind of come off the um you come off the road and the grass is quite long here again. You're kind of up into farmland and they've got wheat growing that is coming um you know, eventually kind of mid chest. Um, so it'd be good to get on that. And and the grass itself, the wheat or anything like that, doesn't seem to be interacting with this at all. After, I'm going to say, about 20 metres when you're off the road, you can feel a sharp corner. Oh, so it's like there's a box. And so, yeah, there, there is there is there is a right-angled corner, and it doesn't... Um, again, you can feel... You know, if you, you can't hook your hand right around it, like, you've again, you've reached the edge of a pane, you have reached a corner in this invisible wall, and so you oh, could carry keep, along parallel of to the wall. It keeps uh, phased people out. Maybe. That's, could that's be a like good discussion. See if you can figure out well, the uh, dimensions. Well, like we don't, I don't know where I'm out of phase two, but maybe it keeps things from that phase out. You're... Uh, because I'm in between phases, but I don't know what the other phase is. You're proposing uh, there's more than one states of phase. Yes, more than one. Interesting. Multiverse. Sit down on the road, kind of cross my legs, and hold my hand out to where I saw, right, my best estimation of where the the wall is, and just kind of meditate on it for a while, while he's doing his little walk in the field. Yeah, um, and. You know, as you're doing this again, you're on a busy road. Carts kind of come by, animals trot back and forth, and are led by by local traffic. Um, people come out and leave the leave the bar and walk past you, and and things seem to be coming, um, you know, perfectly well and fine um, through the area. The one thing you do notice is that, as Gex estimated, the um, people leaving the bar will be speaking a language that you can understand. And then once they pass to your left through the exact spot where you are blocking Sam, you suddenly cannot understand what they are saying. This is the extent of the all speak, oh. um, at least as far as, as as it goes along this road. So what was the in called again? The... the quiet corner. Quiet corner, yes. And sorry, Jed, just out of interest, um, what are languages like across the board? I've traveled quite well. So is it like... You know, the vast majority of this whole continent speak English, but then, you know, what's so, the truth? But then most, some most places people, don't? Yeah. So, uh, the truth is like a kind of um, Esperanto. It is a language that doesn't really belong to anywhere, but most people speak fairly well. And yeah. then um, local communities, local ethnicities, um, you know, local groups will have their own localized language their own domestic language so so within malay there could be what uh, 10 20 yeah that's reasonable yeah okay uh, malay in particular actually being kind of balkanized and so the pytharan empire will you know will have um as many as malay despite being much bigger get you yeah, uh, okay. because, because malay is broken up and um Part of the reason people will come to the quiet corner is so they can have these more private conversations and so they mm. will prior to prioritize languages beyond the truth. The yes. other thing is that you'll find particularly people living in Orilla may find that leaving Orilla's boundaries, they can't really speak to anyone um, because they've just grown up having their language translated by the all speak and they have they realize once they leave town that all they've learned is gibberish, but it's automatically translated and so interesting they don't know a language they just yeah. know how to get the point across 
Interesting. Um, okay. I can't quite remember where I said my character came from, but I think it was the other side of the Pythoran Empire. Anyway. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, it was <laughs> over by the mountains over there somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so um, well, what I'll do is I'll 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 let all that sink in. I'll jump up to my feet, hop the fence into the um into the wheat field, and I'll kind of follow the path through the wheat that um Arnold has taken. Yeah. And and I'll kind of jog to catch up with him, and then I'll kind of you know do a put my finger in the air and swirl it around like a you know wagon's roll over to Doctor Hector and. And we'll kind of, I'll keep walking with Arnold till we get to the far end of this wall. Okay, yeah. Hmm. I was going to suggest we see if I can get in the pub. Have you never been here before, Arnold? Um, you haven't uh, come this way before. Okay, I was going to say, I can't remember. Uh, so, no, I don't think so. But I have left... The boundaries of the which you're from, Marilla. Tr- truce, yeah. I wouldn't have just been in this bit. I would have left the boundaries of he the thing. Really should travel more. <laughs> um, I do. I travel for a living. Well, you're obviously traveling in the wrong directions. So, <laughs> says it you. Clearly, well, this is a much more interesting direction. I've tied up the tied up the cart and I'm going over to help. You can go and find them in the, in the field as well. Yeah, and find um, the end of it where I can get back to the track, but on the far side. I don't know like how, do how just, I'm just, going to just, be able to find just that. Follow <laughs> along the wall. I'd like to find my boundaries here, yeah. and maybe mark it in the dirt. It's good to know your boundaries. So yeah. again, kind of tapping or keeping one hand on this wall and kind of walking through. Um, your boots getting progressively kind of dustier and muddier as you walk along this, um, you know, this, this farm field full, filled with wheat. Um, again, you walk probably about another, let's say another 50 meters along the road, and then you'll find another corner. And that that way you're you're a little way past the inn, but not so far that you can't hear the noise of it coming okay. over the wind. We so estimate can... the size of that length of the wall. So the wall that he's just walked along, what did I say? That was about 50 metres long. Okay. Oh, actually, Retcon, I'm going to stay with the cart because the okay. valuables. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go back around and then try and go in the tavern. Maybe this quiet thing won't allow me in the tavern. So um, you find another corner mm-hmm. and... Um, the wall, Sorry, is the, the other corner at the other side of the inn? Yes, yeah, so, he's past, so he's past the inn, and there's another right-hand corner which comes back across the road, and <coughs> there is equally a barrier to you, Sam, that so doesn't does apply to anybody else. the barrier go through the inn? So it's like, it it's like I've, behind of? where my hand is, it's like I've walked into this, I've gone up this way, around yeah. there, and I've gone here, and now I'm on this corner, and presumably the inn is in here. So the, the barrier ran um more or less perpendicular to the to the door of the inn so if sam were to presumably if sam were to have gone left on the um if sam were to have gone left on the road along that first wall that he hit he would have been able to get into the inn um but not like properly into it if you know what i mean the so let me shimmy a... through shimmy through the yeah. door like well yeah, yeah it's, it's not so much shimmying for you is it but mm-hmm. Let me clear this, and then I'll... Well, we've no intention of really going into the inn, do we? I see the no game? reason. No, it's just very strange. We need to figure out the yeah. cause so we of don't... Yeah, exactly. Well, it's an artifact. Uh, uh... So if the road runs like this and then forked that way, the inn is here. Now, if the door is there, this barrier runs through that. And then off into a field that way, and then down here. So Sam's come down here. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm. And there are, as I say, there are ruined. There are kind of ruins of building all around here. Oh. So presu- presumably the square carries on to the left, and then covers nearly all of the inn. 
Well, I'm going to okay. move down to the edge of the road and I'll wait for our mighty steed. Yes. Archibald. You, you, yeah. So Sam and Gav, um, Elias and yes, Arnold we'll have been able to turn that and you've, and you've walked back to the road and are you just going to signal to um, yes. uh, Gex to... Yeah, let's signal ah. down to the doctor. Okay, very well. I'll just ride up to them. Hop on, lads. That's a bit odd, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> yes, I'm going to be frantically writing in a notepad everything that's just happened. Could it be related to these Social. old ruins, perhaps? Perhaps the inn is built on the ruins of some something with some kind of field to keep out people. What, uh, whatever it is, it's definitely some sort of Numenera weird shit going on. Yeah. Oh, we should um, explore it when we have more time to do so. Yeah, it's where we're not yes. trying hell for leather to get away from the city. I agree. But I do, ha I do have this thing, and as, as we kind of canter off, I'm going to take out a small metallic rod. Um, it's about the width of, uh, say, a broom handle, maybe a bit thicker. And, it, um, and I'll kind of, actually, just before we get on the cart, I'll show it to the guys. So I'll extend my hand and um, both ends of the rod kind of extend a bit. So it's about three feet long. And then from it, like um, slightly shimmered um, cut in the air and a sphere comes out from the rod and forms around me down to the ground like a force field. Ooh. And I say, I found this many years ago in the mountains to the east. Like, if you place your hand on it now, um, Arnold. Yes, I will. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I touched your rod. Um, it's, this is a f force shield projector, level five, gains plus four armor for one hour. So I don't know, like, it, it envelops me like those um, battlefront droid shields. You know, it's, it's a big yeah. circle, like a droidic shield around me. It's suggesting I do that so... and try and walk through it. But no, I'm just sh I'm just showing you another um, so uh, uh, Numenera um, shield effect thing that I'll hand to you to study once I collapse it down again. But I'm just wondering, does his hand go through it, or if in it's... the path? Sorry, go on. So, uh, so physical barriers Sam can pass straight through, or you know, more or less. Um, it takes energy, time. what they call energy barriers, will block him. Okay, well, this is a force shield projector. Does yes, that, does that, uh, that, count, that counts as an energy barrier in the sense that, that Sam's kind of automatic passes through stuff, um, you know, his exists out of phase, will block him. And, and actually, Sam, touching that, it does feel familiar, to, you know, similar to what you've just been coming against. Uh, although Interesting. perhaps less, um, perhaps less sturdy as though if you were to really hit on it, um, with a lot of force, you'd pass through it in the same way that just about anything else would pass through with enough force. Whereas yeah. what you've just been dealing with didn't really feel to have even that much um, flimsiness is the wrong word, but you know what I yeah. mean, the malleability perhaps. And I'm assuming because it's way cooler that my force field actually has some sort of It has a visual, visual effect, which is, the kind of, yeah. which is a kind of blue ripple um, in the air, yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. especially, especially where things are coming into contact with it, and that can include dust in the air and things like that. All right, so I'll collapse it down and, and just hand it to um, Arnold to... I don't yes. know. He knows these things best, so I'll have, hand it to him just to take a look at. Yes, I know these things best. Gav, can I get <laughs> you to make... Um, do you have any skill with the Numenera and the like? No, I'm not <laughs> really useless at <laughs> Numenera. <laughs> Can I can I get you to make me an intellect roll regardless with that? And what level was that thing that I gave you? It's level five. Level five. Okay, cool. So tell you what, I'm going to use three points of intellect here because why not? Okay. Yep. And that's cool. what you needed to roll to make sure you didn't break it. Cool. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Yeah. And then it, I it, drop it, my intellect by three. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Or the pool. And we get it back when we long rest or. Oh. Yeah. So your your recovery rolls work. Um, you can basically you can make four recovery rolls, and and then they reset. So let me get the exact wording for these. Uh, they reset after ten hours. 
So uh, your last recovery roll is 10 hours long, but you don't make that 10 hour one until after you've made all the others. Okay. Um, okay. So even if we slept for 10 hours. Yes, but more or less, you know, um, days can pass between them in the sense that if you if you're not going to make the role, but there's no reason not to make the role if you're if you're doing nothing overnight, for example. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. You just do it. Yeah. Okay. Give me two seconds because I will get the actual the actual list of them up. It should be actually on your sheet, shouldn't it? So. Um, I see. Yeah, it, yeah, one, yeah, action, one action, ten minutes, one hour, ten hours. Yeah. And so you, you can make the one action one, you know, in a couple of seconds, and then you, you have to make all four for them to reset. I I am going to oh, I see that. Yes. get back into the cart with the rod, get my bubble wrap out, sit there squeezing it a bit, contemplating what just happened, and do my first recovery roll. Yeah, sure. Yeah. As, as, a, as a breather. Yeah, and and that's, to... that's a good way to do that. Um, I will... I'll, I'll do the same, in fact. So and that is, it. you recover a d6 of um, a d6 of points. Yeah, I got two. It's not quite full, but no matter. Oh, that button. Oh, there it is. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, it's strange that it's not centered on the inn. Possibly it's centered on somebody within the inn. Well, I don't know. Maybe. I reckon That's... it's related to those old ruins and around the inn. Yeah. Maybe it's not around. above. Maybe oh, it's you, below. Sorry, you add your tier to that d6 as well, Sam. Oh, oh so, so we are two. Three, right? Right? You add, you add, yeah, yeah, you add a 1d6 plus 1 for all of you. Yeah, good. Yeah, I got full back. Maybe those old ruins go under the ground and that was the top of a box. That's what I was sort of thinking. Yeah. Maybe there's like a room or something yeah, underneath. Jumped it would be amusing, yeah, to get you a ladder to climb through up the on sky. top of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do the Tower of Power to get me out there. Anyway, let's carry on. Oh, indeed. Yes. How's Archibald doing up there? How is he doing? Yeah. Seems all right. He's not kicked me off yet. He's, um... You noticed he was breathing kind of heavily when you stopped, but he seemed... He took some water from a trough outside the inn for that brief period he was stopped. He, you know, snaffled some hay that was clearly left there for customers and um, has picked up pace again pretty comfortably, pretty well. Excellent. All three of you going on there. And so you're able to, to ride onwards, um, yeah, very well, very comfortably, kind of picking up some pace there um, for the rest of the day. Um in terms of other traffic that comes and goes, you aren't, you don't see or notice anybody else um, wearing that kind of olive green that you that you noticed in Orilla. Um, but you will see one or two other people who are wearing the same kind of iridescent beetle plate uh, and also the black and white clothing that you saw in Marceau's compound. They don't acknowledge you or look at you almost kind of to the point in a way that the farming people or, or other traffic passing you might do you know everybody's kind of keeping a pace and, and um people will look at you even if you're going too fast for them to wave at whereas those people seem to just look dead ahead when they see you coming yeah sure. yeah they recognize the animal and the markings or else yeah possibly uh, yeah, and, and, and you can kind of carry on going until you, the sun starts to set in the west of you, um, so on your right-hand side. Um, again, you know, everybody else is starting to, when the sun starts to dip down there, the shadows are lengthening. A couple of you will start to feel the glare a little bit, one of you will not, uh, and things start to dip. And the sky goes a really lovely kind of purple, like a bruise, you know, from it being that kind of pinkish color in the morning. Um, to a real dark um, kind of, you know, as I say, kind of bruised purple on one end and, and, and a light grey on the other to the east there. Um, as it gets moving on. Now, 
you haven't arranged somewhere to stay, but the map has had options. You have passed farmhouses on the way, you've passed um, kind of other settlements, uh, but things are starting to get on. And you realize now, because it has been clear all day, because it is getting into winter, that it's going to be a cold night. And so you could sleep out, but I think you'll be more comfortable. Like, you know, I need to say you'll be more comfortable if you can find a place to stay in. Well, do you fellas reckon we, should, we could we could pull off and sit in a field with a fire, or we could? Uh, uh, I'm I'm game for roughing it or finding an abandoned thing. Mm, yes. There is. You can see, and you can see this kind of just about silhouetted on a hill above you. It's it's getting into what we call nautical dusk, and so the sky has this kind of orange tint, and you can see what appears to be parts of a village um, on a bit of high ground ahead of you. Uh, there's a the strong village. chance with the way that the light is cast, if anybody's looking your way, they would be able to see you also, at least in silhouette. And we want to go to the village? Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. That we'll will we'll be obvious to. if we light a fire out in the well, fields. They'll, and they'll we'll... certainly be able to see us. Yeah, and that only raises mm. suspicions. All right, let's go there. I lead us towards the village, and that's fine. And you are able to ride up on it. Um, the thing that you will notice coming up on this, and as I say, it is. Um, it is dark, it is getting cold. Um, there's very little smoke coming out of the chimneys of the houses, even on the edge of town. You can't see any lights or anything like that um, coming up on there. Nor can you hear any noises. Um, it is a little off the road. And when I say a little, it's maybe uh, 100 metres or so off the road with a couple of buildings closer to it and then... Um, effectively you know to the um right hand side so as you're going it will be to the west of the road and so the light is behind it and so you know that if you try to look towards it you'll you'll get a little bit of glare in your eyes and, and even forget you know things are too heavily silhouetted to see in and see yeah. detail you can see things moving around um you know you can see people moving around and you can see um animals but things aren't lit or kind of warming up in the way that they probably should be for this time of night. Hmm, seems ominous. Does seem rather ominous. Oh, you're um, all just being melodramatic. Lead us in. But riding up Very on there well. and taking taking the turning um, off towards this little village, uh, there is a sign which names it as um, of, of Senston. I'm going to dismount the cart and walk alongside, I think. Okay. Yeah, um, so you can slow down the Anine enough. And and that's probably a good idea. It's been keeping a good pace uh, all through the day there. Um, you know, you can turn off there and kind of pick up a pace within that sort of thing. The figures moving around the village, you'll notice one or two standing still, others carrying on moving. They are now turning as though they have noticed you coming in. Um, and regardless, they 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 haven't quite um, you know, like I say, they, they, no one's coming out to meet you. Can I get you all to make? I will call it perception rolls. This does use your intellect, if you'd like. I got a four, but I'm, tra I'm trained in perception, so. Gex, you got a four. Gav, you got six, and Sam, you got. Eight. Hey, okay, um, so that's fine. So yeah, you, 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 as I say, you're coming up on this and you can see um, people standing in there, but most people are moving kind of quickly, um, or at least at the at the closer buildings. One or two people are, are coming from deeper within the village to come out there, but it's kind of hard to see much. As I say, it's getting darker and you're now riding into the setting sun, turning off the roads there uh, to come up on it. But you come up on, on the first few houses and it does now strike you that it is quiet. You can see people moving in the centre of the village realistically and some are looking your way. But there's nobody, you're sure, in the house that you are riding past. It isn't lit. And, um, you know, the, it isn't lit inside. The fire isn't lit and there's no sound. 
Hmm. There are, you know, these are just houses. So there are houses, there are buildings closer into the village that would be um, markets. There's there's definitely an inn with places to, you know, that looks big enough to have places to stay. It has an extra story, so it will have um, bedrooms upstairs and probably something like a like a mayor's house or um, a kind of house of, of, of adjudication leadership. Should we hail, hail the citizen? So as you're coming in closer to town and actually, you, you know, you're, you're riding now along the road into a place where you can definitely see someone ahead of you now. Um, you realize that this, when I'm saying people standing in the road, this person is a bit thinner than they should be and a bit taller than they should be. And they, they, they don't have that kind of drape of clothing so much as the kind of tinge of skin. And then what really upsets you is when they turn around and you realize that they've not been looking towards you but away. Uh, and rather than a face, they have a very long tentacle that comes down almost as long as their knees. Um, yeah, as, as, as I say, um, you know, this, this, this isn't so much a face. This isn't really a human, but rather an abhuman, uh, some kind of mutant that will have probably raided this village and killed its inhabitants hmm. and you, you've Ooh. ridden now enough that you've you know you're you've been passing houses you've been passing buildings and you're coming up on the town center square where this um there is a, a, a sathosh um is standing and it is standing tall and you realize that either side of you other sathosh are emerging there are at least six of them. Um, some, give me perception rolls again, all of you, I think. Uh, Fuck all three. 19. 19. Uh, 19. Yeah, 19 is a lot better. 11. Right. So, yeah, Gav, you can, you can see quite a few. Gex getting a 19. I'm going to tell you specifically there are nine of them. Um, including this one in front of you with uh, another four on each side. Um, you are now more or less in the midst and they have spears and and wooden shields um, around you. These spears are bloody. There is blood on their feet of these things. There is blood on the hands of these things. And there is blood on the steps of several doors, uh, you know, on, on the, the, you know, on several doorsteps of several buildings, there is blood in on the dirt that you are riding up on and towards. Oh, boys, looks like we're going to have to pay to stay the night. <laughs> and, uh, mm, continue on, Doctor. Uh, I'll kind of stand up on the back of the cart and, and push back the the over whatever. The, the can curtain, I... You know, the, yeah. Can I attempt to discern how old the blood is it is wet i would imagine it's, it's fresh. wet <laughs> yeah hmm. can i can i get initiative rolls from everybody please certainly uh-oh uh -oh. four i'm to nine is anybody trained in initiative uh no, no. i am to the left of the cart that's my decision mm -hmm. that's where i got out and walked yep so there are four on your side that you've been able to see plus one ahead of you sam I, would, okay. I guess I would just hop off and be at the front of the cart. I rolled an eight for initiative. It's an a eight. twenty, is it? Yeah. Are you trained in that? No. No, that's fine. Okie dokie. Yeah, no problem. Um, so Sam, you see um one one of the Sathosh um kind of look its head backwards forwards and and go to raise your its spear. Um, it is your turn, Sam. Uh, okay. I am going to attempt to intimidate him by saying, what the bloody smack do you think you're doing? As I grip my sword and I am trained in intimidation. Put that weapon down. Seven. <laughs> So, um, okay, that's, um, that'll be your turn. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. I, uh, I guess uh, I don't know what that counts as. Uh, shouting. I, I'm going to. Would, gonna, action, I would, I, would you like to do anything else? Uh, maybe kind of disguise myself from the other four. Put something between me and them. So I'm just looking at the one who's raising his spear. So, so, so the cart's there, um, and that's kind of broadsided. So the other four that are on the same, that are on the far side of the cart, obviously won't be able to see you yet. Um, okay, so it's just are, the one is, I have. There is um, the. the you haven't kind of tried to obscure yourself or anything so far. You are on a, a narrowish road with houses and, and kind of, you know, businesses, you know, buildings around in front of you. But it, these things are standing more or less on the side of the road. They are um, currently at long distance from you. Okay, so just some sort of cover while standing ready. Please move to some sort of cover while saying that um, if that's the cart that's okay. fine so you can you can I'm trying to think I'm trying to kind of picture the scene i haven't got things drawn up in a way that i can describe that's, this to that's, you that's fine. even if it's just hunkering in under the in, cart. yeah even if it's just hunkering in behind the wheel yeah that's fine of course. i'll allow you to do that yeah get in uh, under yeah. the cart and behind a wheel that's fine well, not like underneath it, but like taking a step back and leaning up with the wheel next to me or something. Looking okay. Around, yeah. Looking so a couple of them. them. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, it, they aren't going to um, throw spears, but Gex being up on the Anine, Gav, you notice um, all of them uh, move in closer. Um, the, the one at the front is standing to block the road to try and block the path of the Anine and the um, you know the, the, the four on each side are moving up towards it. They are moving quickly to try and head you off um, and they are going to get to the edge of the road um, and stand with their spears at the ready to attack you if you try to move past them. Okay, I'm going to barrel down off the edge of the cart um, and I'm going to run up towards them and try use my other cipher that, oh sorry, I assume I took the metal rod back from um, uh -huh. Arnold's, uh -huh. you know, does several You've given it to him to look at it and so I'm happy for you to, yeah. Yeah, it was just obviously a temporary thing. Um, sorry, so the other cipher I have is a block of synth um, which I don't really know what synth is. Synth but... is plastic. Okay, so there's this kind of Rubik's Cube style uh, device of synth that I have that shimmers. Um, I produce it out from a fold in my robes, unfold certain things, and in front of it blasts up this frigid cold wall on one side of the road, um, in f about 30 feet long and 30 feet high, and it it's projected in front of four of them. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I'm going to say you can you can block you can block the four of them. You haven't got especially close to them. They are still a short distance away from you, and so you can either move that short distance to close on them, or remove the immediate distance, which is about I don't know five. I think the rule is three meters or five meters, and then um, deploy oh, well, cipher. I'll move whatever distance is necessary. I've got fleet of foot as a fighting move which is uh, one plus my speed points. I don't know if I have to actually do something to engage a fighting move opposed to just... Of foot. Uh, you can move a short distance as part of another action. It does use a speed point to do that. I will use a speed point to do that. So yeah, you can move You can move a short, your short distance. So you can move the short distance and come up very close to these Sathosh um, and yeah, kind of um, close the distance on them and then drop this cipher out and down upon them. Yeah, I will drop the cipher on one side of the road while kind of looking back at um, DNA and, and, well, our situation. Yeah, and they they reel, um, these, these, these creatures, they um, don't seem to have been expecting that. They don't seem to have been expecting somebody to, to fight back. They were just going to walk in and try and attack you. Um, and just for a note, that cipher thing lasts 10 minutes. Cool, yeah, great. And does damage to anyone who passes through it. Four damage. Yeah, great. All right, that's me done. Uh, Gex, your turn. Well, <clears throat> hop off Archibald and uh, I guess cover the distance towards to to Gav if I can. How far did he go? So Gav moved uh, a short distance. 
Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, again, you can do that as your action, unless you've got something that lets you do it as part of another action. I I just wanted to move the short distance and crack my whip. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you crack your whip as a free action. Crack my whip in the air and say, bring it on, sons of bitches. Been... I hate snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, be, Chuck, be... start the play. <laughs> okay, I need to rewatch these films for next next week. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I think they're all on the Channel Four website at the minute, something like that. They're also all really on easy. the Pirate Bay. <laughs> oh yeah, that'll do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Sam, it will come back around to your turn. Um, so I, I assume my intimidation had no effect on this guy who raised the, the spear. These, 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 all four of the creatures on your side have moved uh, a short distance closer to you, so they are now at short range from you. Okay, I, I want. Sorry, go on. Go on. Uh, no, I was going to hate to interrupt, but like when we see a creature on the road, yeah. like for instance, have as these Satosh, have we ever seen them, heard of them? When you see a weird thing. Like we, the animals we saw maybe scuttling around in in the stalks of the harvested wheat earlier that were, you know, searching for food. Is every animal different, weird? These Mutant, are alien, uh... or is like is a satosh a common thing that we know about, like a goblin? Um. So uh, that's kind of a good question. These are so abhumans. You certainly will have come across, and basically any part of the wild will have this threat of kind of mutated human, um, you know, kind of kind of groups. I, I, the, the but, ten, but a massive different... tentacle for a head is quite a mutation. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and so... different mutations in different parts of the world. So we've yeah, seen uh, and similar things. Yeah, uh, and so this is this is a kind of a kind of a creature that that effectively can be treated as you know um, it is it is assumed that they are some kind of monster. They aren't assumed to be civilized or, or treated as people by by people, if you know what I mean. Yeah. There are mundane animals that you and I will have met, met, and I don't know if you remember me describing kind of weird fat pink animals being in the back of a truck that I think if I'd spent more time describing would have turned out to be pigs. Yeah. Um, you know, so the, these things are around, um, but also there is um, a kind of weirdness and a kind of randomness to the diversity of the wildlife that you will come across. Um you know, scurrying. And, and an ab human is is generally intelligent. Uh, it is an ab human is kind of generally intelligent, but non civilized. They are, you know, the game doesn't have barbarians, so to speak, but it, it has, um, They'll be yeah, kind of, of wild kind of freaks and monstrous people. Um, yeah, they'll be like uncivilized, you. wild humans, but, but not beyond having a discussion with, or at least. Well, attempting these, and intimidate on is what I'm kind of getting at. These things, they they don't really have a. Um, I was just wondering. For a start, they don't. They don't have what a, Sam said. They don't have a face. They haven't really responded to what Sam said, and there's not really any way to get a, an emotional read off of them apart from body language. They might. Not. Um, hmm. They, you know, from the, from the way these things are also acting, obviously they have bloody weapons. They have blood on them, including on yeah. the the tentacles coming from their face. Um, so, it, so it's fair to assume that they're just there for killing. Okay. Um, oh, okay, sorry for interrupting. I, no, it's fine. I'm reading the, the character sheet from now. It says motive hungers for blood. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. That is their primary motive in the game, uh, is to, yeah, to so consume reasonable the blood fellows. I, in which case, I'm going to put something between me and the four draw my crossbow is that a like a what kind of action is that so i think drawing an action and, and moving in the immediate distance to get properly behind that cartwheel you can do that for free i think in this case and then i'm going to point it at one and tell them because i don't know what these things are other than they've just murdered a load of people and broken the law which i won't like mm -hmm. I'm going to very exactingly tell Murder them. Against the law. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell them that. Murder is against the law! Cease! And, you know, I'm not going to roll intimidation because it will fail. But that's essentially what my guy's trying to do. Yeah, fine. Okay. Um, 
these the ones that are walking towards you they do stop uh and they stand a bit more upright and then the two that are on the outside take a couple of steps more and they, they are stepping not directly towards you but um so as to be more ahead of and behind the cart in case you try to move it on a little more the two that are in the center um both kind of stiffen and then one raises its its empty hand um can i get you to make an intellect defense roll please who me yes uh okay i'm going to do this with effort because i'm not trained in it i am the yep. opposite of trained Okay. He's trying to say he's stupid. Yeah. Um, so do you have, do you have an, an inability in intellect defense? Yes, correct. Okay, so you've rolled a five outright. Yeah. Okay, um, you feel the kind of horrific hunger that these things have. Um, they, they swarm and swirl in your head, and the two of them standing together are combining this hunger it is greater than any kind of um angst any kind of sensitivity any kind of emptiness that you've felt in your life uh, it's really quite horrific and you take six points of intellect damage ouch completely Damn. ignores armor in that do we see this happening jet is this a visual effect i, I will make a noise that? They, there isn't a visual effect to that. They are making a psychic attack with their combined oh. things, but you can, um, yeah, Sam can kind of determine that the, the two of them have acted in unison to perform this, standing next to each other. It hurt. And that'll go around. Gav, the ones on your side, um, with you and Gex, are going to try and move. Two of them, as I say again, are going to try and move around your cold barrier, um, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of head back, uh, you know, to the extremes of it. As we said, it's 30 foot long, so they it's going to take them a, a, a little bit to go around it. Again, the two that are in the center there um, are going to pull the same move, and so they are going to stand upright and 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 straighten their spines, and you can see them adjust and sort of thing and adopt more or less an identical posture. Um, and then one is going to raise its empty hand and point directly at. Let's see here. Um, it's going to point directly at Gex. Gex going to get you to make an intellect defense roll, please. Bastards. Uh... Oh, sorry, Jed. I don't mean to be. Yep. Dick here. It's just something I don't understand. So it's my go, but they're acting. No, it's not your go. Sorry. Okay. It's their turn. It's their turn oh, after sorry, Sam, sorry. and then it's you and Gex. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, I'm going to just roll it flat out. Five. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So again, you take six points of intellect defense, uh, intellect damage. Sorry. Okay. Uh, and again, Gav, you've you've watched that quite comfortably. It is um, now you guys' turn. So, uh, Gav or Gex? Uh, okay, I rolled a four, so it's Gav. Um, all right, well, I, I was going to go to the... I was going to do the barrier on one side, and then I was going to go to the other side and deal with them to physically. Towards so Sam? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move over towards Sam. I'm going to... So you'll move the, the short distance to the other side of the cart, and then if you're going to do that and take another action within that, I'll take the point of speed off you again. That's fine. I will yep. take that point of speed down. I will also throw in this XP for a, f um, a player intrusion. Okay, a yeah. Perfect Ooh. setup. Attack all uh, greater than three opponents. I can attack all of them in a single action. What? Oh, cool. So nice. what I'm going to do is just kind of jump with my shield just down at my shins land on two of them and then kind of barrel roll into the other two yeah um yeah so that's yeah you can you can do that you can kind of dash past um the the one that's come around the onion end of the cart the two that are standing together and then the um the last one there they're all within that short range just about so you can make four attacks okay so these are might Rolls? They are they are might attack rolls. Yeah. Um. What, what weapon are you using? 
my fists. You're using your fists, well, then I'm going to count. Yeah, my your mechanical yeah, I fists. Yeah, I essentially don't have a weapon, so it's I'm either using my shield as a bashing object or or my fists. I'm going to say in this case, you can decide whether it is a might or a speed attack. Um, no, I'll I'll stick with the might attack, like a melee attack as such. Yeah, and do do you know <laughs> does this count as a medium or a light weapon? My um, do you have a specific ruling on that or I ha I have combat prowess plus one to one type of damage melee. And that's what I'm doing with my fists. Um, yeah. Weapon, I can use any without physical skill. You can, yeah. Um, Did you take the fights without weapons? Uh, no need for weapons. One arm counts, counts as a medium, so it's a yeah, medium. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So um, four separate attacks. Okay. Uh. But, yeah. No. Let's make okay. one. Just one attack, if you're happy to. Well, can I retroactively spend a bit of might on that? Um. Yeah, but that ten will hit. Well, these are, these, these, these are a, you can spend a point of my effort to apply another layer of damage, yeah? Yes, three points of might. Is yeah. that the way it works? Yeah, that's one yeah, level three, of yeah. Yes, yeah, you can spend, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you got my edge? You've got a point of might. You've got might a edge. might yes. edge, so it's only two points of might to spend a level of effort. Cool. Might. Um, yeah, might. Might tie. Oh. Oh, I had edge and intellect. Does that mean that my thing only costs two, not three? Uh, if you applied a level of, of, of effort, yes. yes, it costs two rather than three, yeah. Yep, cool. Because you've got edge on that, yeah. Yeah, I'll put it back up to eight. Cool. Um, so that's great. So uh, if it's a medium weapon, it normally does four points, is that right? Yeah, so it now does five. Uh, and then you've got a thing that means you do an extra one, isn't that right? Because... Um, well, yeah. it's an extra one in one damage type. Now, I had said that was melee, yeah. because it only really defines it as melee or ranged. I don't think it defines it as yeah. fists or sword. Yeah. You know? So you normally get four, and then you get an extra one for this, so that's five, and you've spent a point of effort on that, so that's six. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, you punch those guys pretty well. Um, and they they uh, wince and buckle and um, bruise very quickly. These things have kind of uh, pale, almost to the point of translucent skin. Um, you know, in terms of uh, how they're built, and they are they are frail and gaunt looking. Um, the human parts of them. Uh, they none of them go down, but they are pretty well bashed. If you've done six points of damage to all of them. Yeah, and that's me done. And that will put you near the tail end of the cart, having kind of moved quite quickly through there. So Sam, you'll you'll see, um, not for the first time, Brother Elias kind of leap into action, yeah, uh, and run through and and slap a bunch of dudes. Yeah, I don't, I don't move often, but when I do, I move quick. I'm a big man. <laughs> Moving with force, not unlike something like an American football player. Just, yep. just smashing dudes. Sweet. Gex? Well, I guess I just moved the short distance to be by the cart with these guys. Um, you're gonna move. You're gonna move back to the cart, back to the, um, back to Archibald. Pretty much, yeah. You notice the one that was in the road blocking you hasn't really moved. It is holding position from where it is there. So still ahead of us. So it's still it's still ahead of you in the road. It doesn't seem to have How moved. How far from it me? Is, it is again another short distance, yeah, um, and I can be more specific than that. Let's say he's um, uh, yeah, eight sure meters is, from you. Short sure is fine. Um, in that case, I guess I'll just stand by the. I can't do anything else. I'll stay by the cart. Yeah, so the um, the Sathos that are the other side of the, the Wall of Cold are all of them a, a short distance from you now. They're, they're, you know, there are two that are getting their way around the Wall of Cold, so they're not going to get to you yet. And the two that were standing there are still standing. Gav has gone around and punched the other guys yeah. pretty well. Uh, so that yeah. comes back around to Sam's turn. Sorry, Gex, do you, are you arranged or melee? Melee. Okay, just, just wondering. Yeah. Um. Okay. How, how does attack? I know Gav just used the super special thing, but does that mean I can only shoot one thing at a time? 
normally yeah uh you don't ha- because gaz playing a glaive he's got stuff for attacking multiple guys uh, and that's okay. one of the things that he's done there uh, i spent the xp to use one of my player intrusions yeah. which are yeah it's a kind of special players. dramatic effect yeah um but yeah normally sam if you if you make an attack you can pick one of them and make an attack roll on it these are i will let you guys know they are a level three creature so basically the role that you're trying to make to beat them in normal conditions is a nine yeah okay um i'm they all look equally fucked so no there's they, none they, they, they're all looking equally hurt gav has punched them all pretty well elias there has punched them all pretty well uh mm. in various soft body parts Okay, well, can I look at the one that fucking, you know, put his hand up to me and hurt my brain Definitely. and loose around him, I suppose? Yeah, cool. Yeah, make me... Um, it's a speed attack with a, with a ranged attack. Okay. Well, I only have are a flat you, 10 speed. Are you trained in these? No. No, okay. What have you got as your flex skill, Sam? You're a, you're a jack, so... I haven't decide what, decided on one at the moment. Okay, sure. I should have got you to, you to do that at the start. I, the, I, I only read it just a minute ago. I only just remembered I had it. Yeah, that's fine. You you can't take attacks or defense for that anyway, but that's fine. Yeah, um, 16. 16 will hit. Um, is it a medium weapon yours? Yep. Of course, cool. so that's four points of damage um, for which the arrow goes in a little bit under the collarbone and this thing goes down. It doesn't even make a noise, but it goes down and the other's their tentacles kind of whip towards it and the blood that spurts out when the 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 crossbow bolt goes into its chest and out the other end uh, you can kind of see them almost sniffing the air at it although their their postures don't move from their their wounded positions and where they are kind of panting to themselves the the scent of blood is obviously appealing to them the ones around them even their own blood um Okay, I'm going to like move slightly away to be at maximum short distance, if that's okay. As far as you can. Are you going to go towards the back of the cart? Yes, and okay. while mo- while moving, just for flair, I'll be cranking the next round into my I, crossbow. Which effectively, be- because you've used your action to um, because you've used your action to shoot, you can move the immediate distances. You can get more under the cart and more of it at the very back of it. You realise then, moving under, that there are other Satos, and you hadn't seen them yet, others on the far side of the cart, uh, okay. past the wall of cold that Gav had cast, and, and some that are coming round the... Um, and well, I will, I it. guess, just uh, make this my bunker, and crank my next round on, and say, more! And leave it at that. And so as they as they come up there, um, yeah, they, they, they continue walking on towards you, Gav, I'm going to get you to make a couple of speed defense rolls. Two of them as two of the Sathosh, the ones closest to where you finished your turn, are going to try and attack you with spears there. No problem. Um, defense rolls are, I'm a, well, I don't know what they are. A speed defense. So um, you, you, defense, you make yeah. a roll with it with a d20. If you are trained in speed defense, you can tell me and I'll lower the difficulty by one. Um, I I can't yes, I am. I am. Yeah. I'm trained in armor. Reduce speed. Oh no, speed effort by one enabler. Yeah. And yeah. I am wearing light armor, which is so light armor will reduce the amount of damage you take if they hit you. Okay, so in that case, I'm not trained in speed defense, by the looks of it. Uh... But I will spend my three points, uh... or two points, because I have a point of edge. Yeah. And uh, two separate rolls. Yeah, two separate attacks. Yeah. So so, is... so one of them comes up behind you, and yeah, deftly you are able to see the spear coming and duck it. And the second one... I... And, and, and the second just the same. Um, you're able to kind of weave in between these two Sathosh as they, they kind of whip and um, jab at you. Um, but you're able to, to duck cleanly between them. Um... Sam, the two that are kind of behind the cart on the road are moving up towards you. They're not particularly close together, um, but they are making their way closer up towards you. They're aware of me under there because, you know, they were on the other side of the cart and I've kind of crawled under it now. It's it's 
dark you can't tell because you can't kind of um yeah. you know okay. you, they don't have a face amongst other things you can't see if they're looking at you or anything like that yeah um gex these these two that are the other side of the cold barrier for you aren't going to make this other attack but one of them is going to try and move forwards through it it's going to keep its hand raised from where it attacks you just a few seconds before yeah. and move forward Gav, how, remind me how much damage that one did it's four, I, believe I believe it's four points of damage it's, it's if they points, try and yeah. pass through it it's going to try and it's going to put its hand in and it is going to reel back kind of clutching its hand um the one next to it is going to turn and walk uh, to you know, back along the road to the way you've come uh, east, along the road, uh, the way the way that you've come, and just move along like that. Um, so we come back around to Gav, your turn. Um, I think I will just finish off one or two that are near me. Well, one that's near me. So I'm kind of yeah. standing right beside one, I think, at the moment. So I'll just yeah. take a swing at him. Yeah, make it, make the attack, yeah. Um, uh, seven, so I think that misses. Seven is, yeah, you're not trained in the attacks per se. They would just do extra damage. That's so not quite going to hit. You are too busy whirling, and you, 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 know, you, you raise your fist and you swing, but in the... Um, in the with the inertia and the momentum of your your defensive twirls, you you're not quite able to connect with it either. Uh, um, Gex, you, yeah. Sorry, Chad. Do you also yeah. get a you get a do you get a move and an action, or you, is move an you action? Can move in immediate mm. distance. Moving in immediate distance, but moving a short a short distance is an action, and moving a long distance requires a roll. Okay. Uh, and immediate distance is part of another action. Yeah, immediate distance is part of an erection, but that is kind of up to, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, maybe a couple of meters, but. On that topic, uh, am I within immediate distance of anyone? So the, um, yes, so at the the bottom end of the cut, so the the wounded ones are, the one that tried to put his hand through the cold wall is a short distance away from you because you moved a short distance from the cart to get to it and they're still away from you the two that are coming up on the cart are now if you move the immediate distance to get to the back of the cart you'll be able to attack them yeah very well i shall make an attack upon one of these brigands with my whip with your whip yes please roll the attack then um 11 is it speed if it's a speed attack yeah that, that that'll hit I don't know if it's, it's okay. So it's a hit. Okay, cool. Let's yeah, eleven will hit either way. Uh, okay, so it, is it a light attack or? A it medium? is a light, so it's two points. It's damage. a light. In which case, uh, yeah, it's, is it only two? Light light weapons, two points. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so you can you can hit that. Cool. Um, two points of damage on one of the satosh, and that will come back around to Sam's turn. Um, in interesting news, unrelated to the game. Do you hear about the GameStop stuff? Yeah, yes, amazing. yeah. Um, the hedge funds have collectively lost more than five billion dollars over this now. Yeah, yeah. three CEOs some, got two billion apiece. Got some like Reddit shit posters. I fucking love yeah. it. Yeah, they, they've they've cancelled. They're called a stop now. The the people that were doing it with a hundred percent losses. The hedge funds. Anyway, back to what we're doing. That looks a bit like a penis coming out of a cart. That's um, the cold war. It's one, your penis, uh... maybe. <laughs> I'm underneath. Um, where where are the two guys? So Sam, you're in there. Yep. Uh, there is a dead one here. One there. One there. One there that Gex has just gone up and fought. Yep. Um, to hit with the whip. Uh, Gav is standing here with two other Satosh engaging him and there's one up here in front of the road that's not bigger than the others (laughs) (laughs) okay uh in which case i'm gex will probably be all right with those two for a minute i'm gonna i'm going to finish off this guy with a crossbow round hopefully leaving you them fighting to each That's a failure. 
Yeah, so the the book is wild. Yep. Um, I th- I'm just going to kind of crunch over to maybe like under here a bit. Yeah. Just, just a little bit further back from the other two. So somebody couldn't grab my legs underneath the cart without being right next to where I am. Okay. Back in over there. Um, that's fine. It's the Sathosh turn. So um, give me two seconds. Yeah, that's, that is still one of them, so that's fine. Yeah. Um, Gav, these two fellas are going to try and attack you again. Can I get you to roll two speed defense rolls? I will spend more points on the f- first roll. Yeah. I- I just remembered I've got a fucking cat. Congratulations. <laughs> so the whole last session, I forgot we had a cat. Sorry, carry on. I it's in the box. Yeah, um, so I think that just succeeds. I'm not so sure. If you lower it right there, yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll succeed, I, yeah. Oh, yeah, I spent the two points. And you know what? They're here to be spent, so I'm going to do it again for the second one. Yep. Oh, boom. Same again. So again, the spears kind of um, they're drifting in on that, so on that, but you are like a true martial artist, kind of rolling yeah. and writhing in around them. You're able to just about anticipate their moves. They their fighting style is pretty rudimentary. Um, yes, they're you just know, jabbing in with the spears, and I'm doing legs yeah. planted, big swirly bendy back, arms Absolutely, swirling around, yeah. deflecting. The way of the trunk and fist. Sam, way this one is trunk. going to in trunks here to try and uh, jab at you. He's not going to be able to jab at you just yet. And uh, no, this one is going to stay stood where he is. Gex, this fella here is going to make an attack on you. It's going okay. to get you to make a speed defense roll, please. Speed defense. Give me big money, no whammy. Seven. Um, Seven. I, I will uh, ease that with two points of speed. So... Up tear it. If, can he use effort on a defense? Uh, you could if you declared it before you rolled. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, fuck it. It's a seven then. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's one's going to hit you. Are you wearing any armor? Yes, leather armor. Light light armor. You're wearing, you're wearing light armor. So normally it would be um, three points of damage coming off of that, which might damage. Does leather armor take it down by one, I think, doesn't it? I'm not sure. Maybe. Uh, okay, hang on. It'd be nice if they had um, all the equipment lists at the back of the book, but I don't think they do. Mm-hmm. You have to go through to the items page. Um... If anyone knows what page it is, I'll bookmark it. I'm just 109 of the, of the PDF. Well, 109 in the book, which Weapons, is not the same. Armor, leather jerkin, one point of armor. It just says no, one point of armor. Is armor. One point of armor, so that lessens the damage by one. So you take um, two, two points of speed damage. Uh, might damage. Might. Okay. I'm okay with that. And that comes off your might pool. It doesn't. Comes out your might pool. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the falls are your hit points, effectively. So what? Okay. Well, now it's not the time to go over it. But yeah, cool. So you you spend effort and take damage in the same out of the same resource. But then the damage track, how does... You when you get to, to zero, zero, when you... you get to zero from any of your pools, you go onto the damage track. Okay. So you, you can get to zero from doing things. Yeah. You can exhaust yourself and, and become impaired. And if all three are zero, you're dead? Basically. Okay. Um, whose turn is yes. it? In my turn. It uh, is going to be uh, the South having their turn, yes. so they're attacking everybody. Yep. Um, this last one here is going to move. Hey, bud. Somehow, yeah. My magically forgotten cat's going to come into play now. Cool. So we moved up to um, Gav. Uh, up to Gex, sorry. And it is Gex and Gav's turn. So, Gav, your turn. Um, I'll attack the one that just, uh, well, they both came from me, so I'll attack one of them. Yep, sure. Yeah. No points spent. There's an 11. 11 will hit. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, so and I'm, Four or, points of damage. Yeah, you're going to kill either one of them. Which have you got a preference? Um, the one near the front of the cart. This one here. 
yeah let's wipe him off um so and your fist comes in and you've turned you've been turning for a few seconds now it's kind of twisting around on the ground and you feel a nice satisfying crunch as your fist comes in with a decent amount of momentum and hits a rib uh and these these ribs just crunch and crumple and the the creature collapses down on the ground nice uh Air rushing from, amongst other things, the kind of hole you've you've effectively created inside it. Sweet. <laughs> Just Crap. punched them really hard. Gavi, you sound like punk. Yeah, that's why. Like, even fatter. <laughs> oh, even fatter. Even you know fatter. The, you know the guy in the Jackie Chan movies who always has the overly sized mates and is yeah. obesely fat and happy? That's yeah. kind of the dude I am. Except he's a wandering monk as well. Yeah. Oh, Gex, it's your turn with uh, Dr. Heckman. All right, so I've got the, these two guys here, right? They're both about to attack you now, yeah. Which one did I hit before? This guy, I think. You hit before, with the, with the whip. Well, I shall hit him again. Uh, eight. <laughs> Eight's not going to hit quite, so the, the whip comes down, but he's wise to it this time. He's seen you raise it and bring it forward. Um, and that's that's going to mess, I'm afraid. Uh, if, by the way, if I was to use a cipher, is that an action? I assume. I use a cipher is an action, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, can I move? Just, I don't know. Nah, fuck it. I'll just move stay a there. little bit back towards the cart. It's not going to take you out of yeah, no, short I'll range. Just, I'll just maybe out of the immediate distance. I'll move out of immediate distance of those two. Then I'll just move to like here, just so that they yeah. have to move to hit me, sort of thing. Yeah, I mean they'll 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 have to move an immediate distance to hit you. Here, stick your D6 on so he doesn't have to draw the shit all the time. Yeah, that'll do it as well. That's a good idea. In fact, can I change that? I'll move towards Gav in immediate distance. Yeah. yeah. So and that's fine. Ish. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to put you for immediate distance purposes there. See so at the back of the cart there now. Yeah. And that will come back around to Sam's turn. Okay, so with all this shit coming on, my very sleepy cat that's been sleeping in a box for the entire session it's previously. in the back of the cart, yeah. Uh, yeah, What's yeah. His name? Um, uh, the cat. Fair. It's just the cat. Um, is is going to... Um, it acts on my turn, by the way. I just control it as if it's another thing. Uh, is going to leap out of the cart and scratch this motherfucker in the face. Sensing that I am in danger through its crazy feline nostrils, doing point zero one points of damage. It does one. It does one damage. Irritating. I don't know. Creature. I assume this is my. I don't really know if it's my or speed. It doesn't matter. It, yeah, give it, give it, give it a roll. Yeah, um, twelve. Twelve will hit. So, so that so it does a point. So that motherfucker. And this got. this thing having a particularly sensitive tentacle, it is going to. Um, Oh, I'm going to say that again. This thing having a particularly <laughs> sensitive tentacle yeah. Yeah. Uh, is going to reel back at the cat that it didn't know was there, kind of leaping out from under the canvas and the hay up on the cart and 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 slashing it and scratching it. Does that use your action, Sam? Or no, it's it's independent of me. It just acts on my turn. Just acts on your turn, yeah. In which case, yeah. it's your turn. Yeah, there is some stuff here um, written in here if you want to look it up. It has Level one creature, three health. It is a target of target number of three and inflicts one yep. point of damage. Its movement is based on the creature type, so it's a cat. So I don't know what that means. Fast, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I am going to uh, put my crossbow on the floor. Uh, I've just remembered yep. I have a spear and not a sword, and um, kind of attempt to get my spear off my back and stab this guy in the legs. If that cool. requires requires I me think... to do. Yes. That'll probably use your your action to drop the put the crossbow down gently and um, draw the spear from your back while you're under a cart. So I'm not going to make you roll anything, but it'll use your turn. Yeah, that's fine. I'll stay there with my spear in my hand. Then. Yeah, that's fine. So the Sathosh underneath here. Um, can I get you to make a defense roll? It has a target number of three. Okay, fine. Um, can yeah. I get you to make a defense roll for your cat, please, sir? Uh, yes. I don't know what target number three means. Uh, it means the... One. It, it, it's going to get screwed up. Um, so the, the Sathosh is going to... First cat action, first cat death. Yeah. 
its tentacle having having attacked it the tentacle is going to whip up and and come at this thing and and uh, this Athos drops its spear and reaches up to grab the cat the cat having pounced upon it and not quite backed away properly um is is grabbed and pinned do you have a sense of of hit points for it if it's got a target of three let's say all right hang on as a level one creature it has a number of target number three and a health of three and health of three yeah that's fine yep. um these sathosh do three hit points they, they inflict three points of damage as standard in which case it's going to be eaten i'm afraid <laughs> okay uh, ro- ro- rolling a one there is is the kind of gm intrusion i get to make for free so um yep. yeah that's... i'm afraid your your cat is being eaten by mute <laughs> i'm even more enraged now yeah um... if it was um if it was a gm intrusion officially Sam, you could use your XP point to keep that cat on death's door. You can spend uh, an XP point to stop me from killing the cat and just have it kind of wounded and out of the fight. Is the cat worth anything? I well, can get a one for free from the wildlife. Yeah. You heartless bastard. Just, just it takes me one, it takes me one D6. Are you going to call it like, you know, mittens two? Mittens three? And then <laughs> we'll be beyond by the end? Three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll use an XP. Okay, cool. Um, there you go. Yeah, thank you very much. Little tiny XP card there. Um, that's fine. Yeah, so the cat is is grievously wounded, and, and you hear it yowl as um, the Sathosh's tentacle wraps around it. So it is um, grappled. Yeah, it is. It is. It is grabbed, and it is being hurt. So he does have a soul. Well, you, maybe you don't know. If you give me two of them, there. Sorry, Sam. Um, no, I'll give me one. I've still got one. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, I can't see any. Oh, I can see cards. They're kind of halfway through your. Yeah. It's yeah, I've given you. I've given you two. Cards, so, okay, you you have still got one, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yes. I make them really small so that I can yeah. put them on my sheet. That's all. That's fine. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah, and so next to them, Gav, uh, Gex, can I get you to make a speed defense roll as as this one here tries to jab at you? Sure. Can I ease this? Yeah, you can. You can lower the difficulty by spending a couple of points of speed. Yep. Fourteen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Comfortably again. The the spear. You hear it come past your ear, but it has missed determinedly as you as you move away and past it. Silly bastards. Um, were it a mite closer, it might have brushed against the brim of your hat. Uh, but you're Oof, fine and good, and you can bolt and brace against the back of the cart there. Gav, likewise, can I get you to make a speed defense, please? Yes. Na, 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 na. Boom, nine on the nose. Yeah, that's 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 fine and good. And as you have been, you are able to manhandle and bat the spear out the way with the back of your forearm. Um, kind of, you know, bolt bumping against the uh, the shaft of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sam, that'll be your turn. Okay, absolutely enraged by the fact that this motherfucker's got my cat wait. with spear in hand. Oh, wait, did Gex have a turn? No. Oh, yeah, no, hang on. Fuck's sake, Jeff. No, you went, yeah, we went cat's turn and then Sam, Sam, and turn. then. Yeah, uh, and yeah. now and now it's Gex and Gav's turn. So, yeah, Gav. Yes. Gav, it'll be your turn. Sorry, fellas. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, sweet. Okay. <laughs> um, I will drop another two points of might on smashing this guy. Are you going to put that into uh, attack or damage? Uh, attack. Into the attack. Yeah, fine. You'll hit him. Just hits. Yeah. Five, uh, four, five, four points of damage. Four points. Five points because you've got it's a medium attack, and then you've got your uh, combat brass. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's five points, and and again you get a similar kind of thing. You're you know having knocked the spear out of its way, you know out of its grip. Its whole front is exposed, and your fist comes square into the sternum of this you know this kind Crunch. of skinny old man body. Um, and again the rib cage kind of collapses inwards, and it doesn't even have the energy to grasp inwards. It's like the the tentacle whips upwards, and the head whips backwards. And this thing just just falls and crumples at the knees and um, down on the ground. You hear very briefly a kind of choking sound, and you're aware that this is the first noise that you've actually heard these things make. Um, they are silent in their movement, more or less, and, and certainly silent in their 
you know, of, of voice, but you can you can very briefly hear it rasping for its last few breaths before it dies. Um, can I also use my fighting moves of fleet of foot now? Mm -hmm. So one you plus speed points. So yeah. what I want to do is basically swamp over here. Yeah, um, I'm uh -huh. inclined to call that an immediate distance, but if you want to move close enough to get at these, yeah, you'll need a speed point to, to move close enough to engage them. So it's so one sorry. plus speed points. So how many speed points would you like me? Um, even, even if I, like, in fact, fuck it, I'll spend the points if I get up in between yeah. them. Spend, spend a speed point and you can move the short distance, which I'm happy to call that. Cool, thank you. Uh, so yeah, spend. Yeah, um, so that's fine. You're in amongst them. Uh, Gex, it'll be your turn. Um, so this guy is still, still up, right? Yeah, so this fella you have hit with the whip once. This one has not been injured. Okay, uh, and this is Gav. Just so the one in the road and the one on the other side of the cold barrier have not moved in a little while. They are standing and watching well, like still. The one that's near Sam. The, the one cat, that's near Sam is, is is killing a cat. <laughs> it's attempting to. What a bastard. <laughs> All right, then. I guess I'll move immediate and attack this guy. Wait, is this Gav next to the other guy? Yeah, I'm, I'm Gav the blue is, has, Gav has so gotten I'm in between good. the two. Okay, because I've already hit this guy. I'd like to hit him again if I can. Can I do that? I'll or? say that you can do that with your whip. Is a whip? Give me... Yeah. Uh, Pay attention, Jed, right? There's literally got a few no feet of range. There's literally yeah. no information in the book. It just says whip two points, light weapon two points of damage. Two shots. Um, the M's flare. They're usually quite long. They're usually yeah. like, like a five meter range. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bit of range. Catch it yeah. with the edge of the whip right in the face, if I can. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, is, is the, do you reckon the whip's a speed or a might weapon? Uh, I will let you decide. I would normally use speed for that. I would like to say it's a speed weapon, and I will yeah. Ease, yeah. ease it with some effort. So, 13. 13 will hit comfortably, yeah. Cool. yeah. So, so, 2 to him. Yeah, and again, you, you kind of you hit and you cleave off this this kind of wound on it, and so the, the, the blood whips up, and actually its own tentacle comes and presses up against it um, and, and kind of whips and writhes uh, against the wound that you've just scored upon it. Um, so that's two hits you've put on that one. I like we're in an anime thing. Because you like... because you're using a, a light weapon, Gex, so you 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 should hit these things on a six. Oh, okay. Um, so I think easing your your attack isn't quite so points, important. Yeah, that's fair. Um, you could spend those points on damage to yeah. get more accurate strikes and like take out the tentacle or whatever. Wait, how does that work? So you, when you spend effort on an attack, you can either ease the attack or increase the damage you do. Right. Point. Got you. Cool. Cool, cool. I'll we'll do that next time. Um, Gav, you've had your turn to move. Gex, you've had your turn. Sam, now it will come back to you. Oh, okay. Can you expend? Oh, you can only expend one effort, can't we? That's how many times we can use you have, effort. You have a turn. limit of one at the minute. Again, you'll be able to do oh, this as your character okay. advances, but you'll have um, yeah. effort an effort score of one on the top right hand side of the corner. Yes, got you. So one point of effort per turn. Yes, so I'm going to, with my spear, kind of crawling forward, can I attempt, using effort, to fucking spear this guy right in the tentacle that's holding the cat, maybe like further down his tentacle, so he releases it? That is my intention. So you would like to, um, uh, yet yeah, deliberately kind of disarm him like that, and you're going to spend a point of effort to ease the difficulty of doing that? Yes. Uh, yeah, you can attempt that, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's might, because it's a spear. Yep. So I've used the three points. And so I'm going to call that the normal attack because you've put the effort into it, so I'm not going to lower the difficulty of the attack per se, but um, 13, will, 13 will hit and will hit it in the tentacle. And as I as I've said, these tentacles are a particular concentration of nerve endings and, and capillaries and, and the like. They are vulnerable. Yeah, it's like um, the equivalent of antlers on a fucking ant or a yeah, or the nose on a dog, I suppose. Yeah, that's it. So you you you'll you'll hit it, and it will again kind of reel back in this sort of way, where it's 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 almost like it had forgotten that you were there briefly, having been slashed by this cat, 
Does it release um, the cap? That's yeah. The so that's yeah. So it so it you you can see the tentacle whip. You can see its hands come back as it bends down, uh, not to look at you, so to speak, because it doesn't have eyes. But um, can you copy my dice from it? Yeah. The, the D six. Yeah. Just yeah. Give me another. There you go. Okay. Me, meow. Um, so I'm with with the cat after doing that. I yep. does nothing else for me, but the cat I, I am assuming is just going to go nah, run away. I, I'm going to leave it incapacitated for a minute, so I'm just going to leave it there for the moment. Um, oh, okay. It's been wounded by this Sathosh. Oh, is it? Um, is it knocked out? Yes. So it is. It is grievously hurt, but not killed. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yes. Because, uh, because it took three points of damage and only had three points of health. So. Roger. Um. But you've hurt that Sathosh, and you're using a spear, which is a medium weapon. So yes, for... um, this one, having been punched by Gav already, again, the spear kind of comes up, and, and it's bleeding, as I say, kind of quite profusely um, from the tentacle. And as it, it it's going to kind of reel backwards a little bit, it's going to bleed. Um, it's, it's quite hurt, this one. Roger. Um, yeah, it's, it, you know, and, and, and as I say, actually, the blood that it's, it's using its hands and it's trying to press on the wound and trying to catch the blood and and actually it's ending up smearing it everywhere and and all over this all over the spot and can i get perception rolls from everybody before i do anything more is there intellect rolls i think Inter perception would use your intellect yeah i'm going 18. to use this okay murder dice <laughs> 15, I used. Yep. Gix? I got an 8. An 8, but you're trained in it, aren't you? Uh, Yes. And Sam? 18. 18, cool, right. This one over here uh, runs away. Yeah. And it runs away back into the village. Uh, and this one up here is going to run away backwards. Um, you know, like I say, into the village, and you don't quite see where it's gone. It's now getting dark enough that... Um, you know, you're in amongst the shadows of buildings. It's easy for them to slip away because you are in dense kind of um, villagery with with wattle and daub and, and kind of rural buildings with timber frames and the like. Thatch roofs. Very picturesque, very quaint. Um, which leaves uh, this guy here kind of flailing in his own blood. Uh, and then these two fellas here who are... Um, this chap is going to try and attack Gav. So, Gav, can I get a speed defense, please? Fail, I think. Uh, seven fail, yeah. Um, so he's going to hit you for, would be three points of damage. Um, I believe you're wearing a point of armor, so you can you can take one point off that. And where does that damage go? That comes out of your might pool. So two points in my might. Cool. Two Done. point, you lose two more points. Might, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this is this is the spear isn't hitting you especially hard, but it is kind of coming down. Actually, it is again the shaft that hits you on the shoulder, kind of up on the muscle there, and the leather dampens it a little bit. But it, it's not the sharp end, but it's still enough pro probably to bruise. Oh, sorry, I have a light, sorry, a light armor and a shield. I don't know if the shield does. Uh, shield. Stuff. I can't remember. I, Where the is shield the didn't equipment? increase your armor, but ah, hex, right? Okay. I'm looking at the the rules section here, chapter th part three, chapter rules of the game. Mm. So armor. ninety-eight shield provides an asset to speed defense rules. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, right. Okay. In which case, you'd be trained in that, Gav. In which case, right? We need to remember that. So you are in fact trained in speed defense. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so that's yeah, fine. That. So in which case he's not going to hit you. He's going to come down and he's going to kind of bounce off your armor on your shoulder, so, and, it, and it doesn't hurt. And he would have done one point of damage. Is that correct? No, he hasn't done any damage because you have it, it counts as a miss. Yeah, but how much counts, did he do? He would have done two points because you've got one point of armor, and he would have done three. So I think okay. I took two points um, off you. I've actually got two points of armor. You've got two points of armor, in which case you would have done only one point of damage. Okay, okay. Yeah, cool. I don't quite know why I have two points of armor if I just have light armor. You should, yeah, maybe it's in the glaive thing. Look it up later. 
He missed. Is that what's your focus again? Is it to do with to do with your focus? Did you take um, fuses, flesh, and steel? Yes, I believe I did. I think it's in that then. Did I not write that down somewhere? Why are you talking about it? It was either that one or the other one of the fuses, cyberware, and no, I think it is flesh and steel. I just don't think I wrote it down, but I took all the abilities from it. Yeah, so fuses, flesh and steel, tier oh, okay, one, well, advanced we can... body. You gain plus one to armor, plus three to your might pool, plus three to your speed pool enabler. Yeah, so you, you have an extra point of armor from being metallic. Yes. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yes, it's under the who. Up the top okay. Of the character yeah. sheet. Yeah. yeah Using yeah. flesh and steel. I did take it. Yes. That is sorry. your character focus. Yeah. That's fine. Um, Gex, I'm going to get you to roll a speed defense uh, roll as well from this uh, Mr. Gray here. He's going to um, also come at you with his sharp stick. Okay. Um, uh, just going to regular roll if you wanna. Okay. Nope. Regular roll twenty. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, uh, this Boom. thing kind of jabs at you. Um, it's getting a little desperate, and the spear is going to stick into the back of the cart in a way that um, it's it's stuck. Like this thing actually can't retrieve it. Um, like that, you know, it, it, it's gripped onto that, and you see a kind of um, desperation in the Sathosh's movement that you haven't seen in them yet. It, it starts kind of yanking quickly, but actually, it can't reach it at all. Uh, it can't get it out of there at all. I'm going to come over to you fellas' turns. So, Gav, your turn. Um, I'm going to spin back and with one fist smash the spear. Just, uh, yeah, whatever. And the other one attack the grey guy. Yeah, so the spear that's, that's stuck in the, the back of the cart, you're going to smash that? Well, I, it was more just a, a colour thing. You know, yeah, like fine, a, yeah. And and, uh, and then an attack well, Mr. Gray. Well, my, uh, my attack is essentially I want to disable Gray. Yeah. So um no points spent and there's a fuck solid one. Boom. Ow. Okay. Um so coming down onto that, you, you kind of bump into the spear and it's actually like you're not expecting it to be there. Um so this spear that's gone to the thing blocks your movement for what would be a really good punch. You kind of bang into it like um like a crash barrier almost, and, and it knocks you off balance a little bit. Um, and, and again, your, your punch goes completely wild there. Uh, I'm okay. not going to GM intrusion you on that, but um, yeah, you, you, you I think you it. should. Bring it. Uh, <laughs> all right, fine. Uh, in which case, um, roll me one more. Just give me one more roll. Are you doing it, GM intrusion? Is there a Yeah, I am. Yes, I'm going to give okay, you. Yeah. yeah. So this is, I'm going to see whether you fall over or not. So make me a speed defense roll or something to keep your balance. So I'm okay. trained to speed defensive, right. we've just yeah. found, but yeah. there's a four, so. The four is not going to make it. I was I'm going to give you a six arse. target there, yeah. Um, so you've <clears> slipped <throat> in the mud from having turned and twirled and hit a, a lateral barrier that you weren't expected to be there. So you are prone in the dirt here. So they have an advantage. <laughs> so I'm going, to, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you an, uh, one point more difficult on your your next defense rolls next time they try and attack you until your next turn. Um, I, did, I did see um, there is some sort of advantage rules in this, isn't there? There's like because um, I I was looking at the um, page one thirteen, which was like position a prone target. In, they're easier to hit. So yeah, in range yeah. combat, they're harder to hit, but regularly they're just, they get advantage attacking me. Does that just shift it one or the uh, other? Yeah, so that that's that's what that would be, is it would shift it one one point harder or one point more difficult. Okay, cool. Uh, it would be an, an asset or a hindrance, I suppose, is the word I want to use there, yeah. Uh, ask uh, mud. Yeah, and, and, and you, you kind of splat down. Uh, Gex, it's your turn. Um, this guy is still alive, right? This guy's still alive, but wounded. You have blood. You have put blood upon him. Motherfucker! All right, I'll I'll attack him and I'll twice. use effort to increase the damage. Okay. So that's a twelve. Twelve's gonna hit. Yeah. And then um, uh, I spend the effort to increase the damage to what three? Yeah. Yeah. So that's fine. Uh, and again, this kind of comes down, and this this strikes effectively across the top of his head it is doing quite a lot of surface damage and so you get a nice good cut on him 
um, a, you know, nice good laceration with your whip there. Um, sorry, two seconds. I'm just counting up the hit points there. If that's yeah, okay. And and again, it's kind of reeling a little bit. Um, it's not down. It's not dead, but it's it's hurt. Yeah, definitely. You know, you you've cut it multiple times, and it doesn't really know what to do. Just like the one over here with with Sam, it is pressing on the wounds and trying not to lose too much of its precious blood that it that it savors so much. Just blinding um, fluids. And so, Gav, you've had your turn. You landed on your bum. Gex, you've you've attacked <laughs> this fella. Sam, I'm going to come back to you with your spear. Yep. Um, um, this this guy, as I say, he is now unarmed. He's just pressing on, basically on his own nose to try and stop himself from from bleeding. He's not paying much attention to anything else. Oh yeah. Well, then I'm going to go in for another hit. Does that mean he's going to be easier to hit? Because he's yes. just fucking, yeah. I'm going to yeah. make him. I'm going to make him a layer easier to hit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're a pirate uh, than him as well. No, I'm lower. Uh, you're than... under, under the cut. Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm the stabbing him in like. Yes, yeah. um, okay, coming in with a spear hit, an eight. Eight's yeah, eight's fine because I've made that easier. And so the um, the spear then comes up, and and because of the way it's pressed, you can basically the, your spear will come into its neck, and Wait. it goes in there, and there's quite a lot of blood, and it's trickling down the haft of your spear, and and it's um, going to come down towards your hand pretty quickly there. <laughs> For flavour, as I'm doing that, I'm going to be like pushing myself out, and I'll push it into the floor from its neck with my spear. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. And the thing just goes down like you've you've killed it almost as soon as um it's gone in there. It was already kind of bleeding a lot. And then and I'm yeah. going to turn and cradle my kitty. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Do that. That's um... my turn. These guys that are next to you. So Gex, this fellow in the grey is going to spend the turn trying to, to pull his spear out. Um, so that's fine. And so he's, he's again, it's kind of seen Gav go down, but it's basically it's putting the effort and it brings a foot up to the back of the cart. This one here is going to move slightly and actually try to attack you, Gav. So I'll get you to make your defense roll one more time so i know we've just set and established that you've got an asset on this but i'm going to cancel that out because you're on your bum you are you do still have your spear i'm hit but the six is going to hit yeah absolutely so that would do three points of my damage if you've got two points of armor that's just one point yep I'm taken yes one point of my damage and that's yeah again like i say it's not particularly sharp this spear but he has hit you um with quite so a bit it, of it cuts the skin but i've got some sort of subdermal something or other think of it more like almost um yeah actually because it's jabbed at you so it, it has jabbed and it's you know it's found a little bit of space in the armor and um yeah it, you you've caught it in plating but it has cut you and again oh. the scent of blood kind of catches the attention of of, of these other ones so these things essentially look like I don't know if you know Cthulhu, where you've got the dark, um, the what's it they called? The dark goat of the young, like they're. There's a there's a picture in the it, book. It, oh, is it okay? Yeah. It's like a tentacle just takes over the human. You know what I mean? It's. What are they well, called? Do you want to see? Uh, it? They are called page Saf two five so one. Two five one of the book. Yeah, uh, if you're using PDF pages, it's two five three. Okay. They're like a they're like a skinny old man where the head is, you know. It's not quite mind flayery, like but it's one big to reach. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 got you. Yeah, it's almost like a mind flare. Yeah, it's a little bit mind flayery, but they're um. Yeah, it looks like a bit of a ball sack of a chin, though. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yes, cool. Okay, yeah, no problem. I'm. I'm uh, down. But we will come on to your turn next. Um, I will stay down, and Sweet I will the do leg. Sweet the the, leg. the you know the helicopter leg spin flip up. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and while doing that, I will be sweeping the legs out, the frail, skinny old man legs out from under Mr. Gray. Okay. Yeah. So sort of street fighter move. So a bit of an attack, and I'll spend. Tell you what, I'll spend an extra point. I don't know if this allowed of speed to use my fighting move, fleet of foot, to get back to my feet. Yeah, I can. I'll let you do that. Yeah. Is that cool. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and then just a basic it's, attack. It's, it's on this entirely guy. and very reasonable. Yeah. And yeah, that, that'll hit him quite well. And so you actually, you're spinning your leg and it's actually like your foot comes around and collides with something like the back of his knee. Some of, you know, the, the back yeah, of his and knee. Yeah, like four points of damage or something. So it's yeah. chunky. 
you, you, you've hit it nice and hard there. And again, it's kind of going to go down on the knee and lose its own balance. It is pushing and its other foot was up on the thing, on the, the back of the cart, trying oh, to yeah. gain leverage um, against it. So you've hit this thing pretty hard. And oh, sorry, that's five points of damage, isn't it? Because medium plus one. Five points because you've got your medium plus one. I don't think this one's been hit yet. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's yeah, fine. So you've, 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 you've hit it, but um, it's... Yeah, it's it's not dead, but it's going to feel that pretty hard, and it's it's not quite gone down on its ass, but you've you've knocked it in a way that it's going to have a hard time. Um, it's going to be. I'm going to make it a point easier to hit next time, but I'm not oh. going to cost it any more action. I think. Yeah, yeah. that's me. And um, Gex, that'll be your turn. Uh, this one guy just will yeah. not die. I'm going to hit. Him. I mean, I mean, nearly. You've hit him a whole bunch. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking whip him again. Yeah, fine. Yeah, seven, seven, seven will miss. Motherfucker. All right, fine. Um, so again, the whip comes down, and and this time the whip's just a little bit. Wait, no, seven will hit. Seven will hit because it's a light weapon. So yeah, you hit him, and the whip here it comes and it catches again on the um, again on the tentacle, and it's this big deep wound this time again the the blood capillaries the blood vessels the the skin is particularly thin here and it is exposed um and and you open up the the tentacle on the front of this sathash's face and and blood just keeps pouring out of it um yeah I, I, and it and it kind of drops down to its knees and there's this moment in which it's kind of pr- trying to press on everything and it's again same as you heard before the kind of panicked breath the last few breaths of this thing but actually you've you've rent so much blood out of it and and it starts to shake and heave at the shoulders a shock nice. ripples through the body from being so wounded by by whipping Ooh, and nice. and it just it, it kind of keels over and it, there, there are a few last convulsions uh, but then it stops moving and then, and then blood just just pours out the nice. scent of so much blood this this gray one with its tentacle there is is um uh reaching out towards it is it is heaving and and clawing with its own face so to speak for the the blood of its fallen comrade um but sam it is your turn before we do anything with that um i can throw a spear right uh yeah you can throw a spear as a speed attack yeah and i'll i will let you do it across the top here but bear in mind that this thing has been knocked Uh, down uh, and you'll have to do it over the cart so it's going to be kind of difficult Wait one. So with, with this in my left hand, my little kitty. Your kitty cat, yeah. Yeah, I shall move to here, getting a little bit of a run up to yep. launch the spear towards that guy. Hopefully, missing the corner if there's enough to run. To yeah, I'll let, I'll let I'll let you run there again. It's not going to be super easy, but um, I'll let you make that attack, and you can get I, in a line of sight. I, I will use an effort of speed. Yeah, cool. To make it slightly easier. Cool. I'm going to launch my spear at that guy on the floor. Rolling a fourteen. 14 will hit it. And your spear already bloodied comes down onto this thing and um, again similarly just just comes through kind of into the left armpit from where it's been and and up out the opposite shoulder um, of it and it just splat it, you know it doesn't quite splatter but it just falls down flat in the mud. The same mud that you know, a moment before Gav himself was lying down in, which is all kind of slurried up and twisted. This thing lays down flat in. Yeah, uh, that's what you get for you fucking have... with my cat. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and you have um, killed these these Sathosh. Sweet. It has only been, I mean, I, I didn't count the amount of rounds that was, but it's, you know, it's been a minute or so. And now, other than the, the jet blasting air from the cypher that Gav set off, you can hear nothing. Um, there is no movement, no sound of bird song, no whistling of, of wind or um, kind of turning of the wheels. Your anine has stayed remarkably still as though it is trained and accustomed to kind of violence going on around it like this you know it has turned and kept its head on and around but basically um it's kind of kept uh, pretty stoic good luck like that sweet i would like uh, to retrieve yeah, my spear and crossbow yep fine yep good Just to say that out loud the air settle and you know give a proper listen 
Uh, do you want to make a perception roll there, Gav? Or? Well, yeah, why not? Change my color to blue. Um, a 12? Yeah. I'm um, not, not trained or anything. No, that's fine. Yeah, you, you, you genuinely, as I said, you, you can't really hear anything. There are a couple of squelches of mud um, as, as Archibald kind of adjusts his, pe you know, his footing and, and steps up and down in the mud. Doesn't seem disturbed at all. This is the only thing that's really kicking out any noise. And it's quite a bit because it's quite a powerful air jet. Um, it's yeah. very cold and it is cooling the air that you can feel near you. It's like it's kind of like a on. one foot thick blizzard. You know, it's yeah, that's exactly it, noise, yeah. And, and it, it is it is pretty cold. It's like having a loud fan or an AC unit or something like that. Um, a, a couple of a few meters away from you. But beyond that, the village is quiet, like, you know, as the grave. Okay. As the grave, indeed. You might want to take your <clears throat> dice and shit off the table just because we're using one world and it can take mm. stuff from the table. And make them awkward. You love it. That's me. Um, all right, well, I'm not even going to suggest looting the town or anything as blasphemous and heretical as that, or just dickish as that. So, um, I'm find a good probably spot for a nap. Bit pre preoccupied with the cat. Uh, you are kind of on the edge of a town square, and so if you look ahead of you a little bit, you will be able to see, as I say, amongst things that, that appear to be houses that would appear to have been a blacksmith shop that would appear. Um, to have been, um, you know, kind of places for market stores, that sort of thing. You can distinctly see uh, an inn. Um, that's a, that's known. To, what what did I call this town? I think you did. Um, you did. Hang on, I wrote it down. Senston. 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 Oh, yeah, that was exactly. It in which case, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, it is. It is simply the Senston Tavern. Is what the sign on the um, it says. Uh, and there is a town hall there. Again, fires are not lit. Um, there is uh, wet blood on occasional doorsteps. But um, yeah, things things don't appear to be alive or particularly destroyed. You know, things aren't wrecked. Uh, what should we find the we stay least Indian. bloody building? <laughs> stay there. Should we stay here, considering? They might come no. back in greater numbers. Ah, I think we'll be fine. We were looking for a place to sleep, and there's no there's no one to charge us staying in the inn, so... There's two of them still out there. Is that? Oh, I'll, yeah, um, shit. What I'll do is I'm, I'm going to go to the back of the cart, and... Well, assuming... Uh, no, I'm going to move the Satosh up to the outside of the inn and tie it up. The, 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 the Archibald. Uh, Archibald, yeah. Not yeah. Atosh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, we should leave the bodies strewn in the road, just so if uh, if the Satosh come, they, fuck me. Yes, yeah, the Satosh come back. They, they might think Devour twice. They're on. Yeah, I'm gonna take the chest of artifacts of Numenera, the back of the cart, and I'm gonna lump it onto um, Arnold, declaring that I'm going to patrol the village. Um, you, I will drop it because I'm holding my cat. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. No, in fact, I'd have more empathy. I'll help you with yeah. that. Towards that, so I will. Um, yeah. Okay, so I, I'll attempt to drop it. Give it to Arnold. I'll see that he's obviously cradling his, his um. Ooh, almost could also say that's the other aspect of his soul that he has yep. to save in order to become whole again. Um, and I'll hand it to the doctor and say I'll, I'll just have a quick look around to see where those other two came from. Very well. I shall guard these with my life, sort of thing. Yes. Um, can I, you know, without leaving me completely useless, cradle in the cat for the next hour? Yep. Can Can I attempt to do something to make him stable? Yeah. I, um, I was yeah, going you... to take the healing skill, but I never did. Yes, <laughs> I don't have anything in it either. That's fine. Regardless, I'm going to say you can spend your next recovery roll on your cat rather than on yourself if you'd like to do that as a trade-off or yes, so I can get spent... you to make a roll it, but if you fail the roll it might not go well. I'll spend 10 minutes doing the first option. Yeah, so you can you can put some bandages on the cat, give it some, some food and some fluids, tell it it's incredibly okay. good and that you love it with all of your heart. Kitty roll. Three. 
yeah, cool. Well, the cat is the cat is going to make a full recovery, but it might take a little while. Okay. Uh, that's 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 all we could maybe splice it with some cyberware or something. <laughs> yeah, replace the parts. Yeah. I need uh, a Wii. I could end why I was about to say that during the yeah. combat. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I'm, yeah, I'm going to grab a drink. Okay. Uh, cool. But we'll 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 take a moment and then I'll I'll set you guys up in in Senston. Okay. Your plant pot came, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's done. I quite enjoyed that combat system. Was it alright as a as a in terms of a system thing? Mm. I, I tried it's, to uh, yeah. I think it's, as a an you don't idea get to do much, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know I was the exception because I spent a bunch of stuff and I'm a combat dude, but it felt like I got to do so much more than uh, Sam and Gex. Some of that is is because you are the combat class. Yeah. Yeah. And there'll be times if we get into exploration or... um, Yeah, you'll just be following. Yeah. 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 But it is because there's... It's not a case of, you know, splitting your action up into an action economy. Yeah. As much as D&D. Yeah. It does mean that the turns are quite quick. So I can imagine us three or four sessions into this going, yeah, like, this is what I'm doing. Roll. Yeah, you're go. Yeah. yeah, and 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 that should be. I I wanted to get a fairly simple combat in, but to show you the range of things in there. But I know a lot of that was just okay. Make a speed defense. Okay, make a defense, and, and that's kind of how the combat goes. Um, I the game itself isn't meant to be super combat heavy. Yeah, I think in the combat as well, it re- it probably rewards you to 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 make more flair yourself in the RP. I, I appreciate it. I think it's cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Jed, um, get a bag of tokens <laughs> so next time you're not drawing the enemy. So just yeah. draw. The, if you're going to do it, just draw the card. That's a good idea. Whatever. I'll do that now, yeah. Drop tokens on. They don't need to be models or anything, just the little gems. That's fine. No one gives a fuck about that. There's... In one and I'm of happy things, to use the dice for I us. It, I think it's the go. Or Yeah, yeah anyway. There's them, yeah. the generic ones, and you can colour all them. You can tint them different colours. Uh, I've got the balls of them now. I'm, I'll keep so them you can team. just give, you know, greens for friendly. Or, well, whatever. Whatever, yeah. Just, I'll just take some of your overhead off, won't it? Yeah, and yeah. Sam, do you mind increasing the size of the D20s, Sam and Gex? Just so. Right. Can you just no, plus or minus? The, the little ones I can't read. Yeah, plus minus, yeah. Table. Just so that it kind of means while I have my character sheet zoomed in on one corner of my screen and my camera's angled over. Okay, now you're taking the piss. <laughs> it's like, Dude, I am making it. a statement. <laughs> one. One. <laughs> a belly that's, rolls. That's why you don't use yeah, that's my dice. It's metal. Yeah. If you, you can right-click on them, and I think, well, I don't know if you can with those ones, but 
you can change the properties of some of them when you have the tools and you can change the material from oh yeah you can right click on the plastic ones you can change the material from metal to plastic there you go i rolled a 20. yeah sure you did i saw that <laughs> you can just push the roll button and it rolls it where's the fucking yeah, point in that Shit. It's a shit. It's a shit roll. That was the problem yeah. with those clicker strip things. <laughs> you could just right, right click and put twenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just. Well, I've been yeah, I, I the party it. notes as well. Yes, uh, that's another thing. Once, once I've done, got the cat stable. I would want to note down everything we've done to the nth degree to show any law enforcement. Should we perhaps leave a note a question. on the door? Yeah, like while yeah. I patrol, I'll go back to the sign that says Sinston 100 yards this way. Yeah. And I'm just going to get a stone and kind of cross that out or get a bit of charcoal and write here lies evil type yeah. of thing. Stay away, you know, Population whatever, zero. whatever that kind of marking or notation would be from my knowledge of, you know, Geography and religions. I'm sure there's some sort of yeah. Um, what's the warning term? sign? You know, warning sign or like yeah, or a skull on it. Some kind of coded yeah. Um, the evil like eye. A, yeah, like a traveler's mark. You know, like a, a bum's mark of traveling around yeah. America where they this way lies no good. But also the fact that I just want to patrol the place and make sure they've actually fled from, from a, a further distance. If yeah. not, I'll, I'll squash them. But can you yeah. describe the building we've gone into? So you have come into um, a tavern. It is architecturally quite similar to the rest of the village. This is timber framed. It is clay and wattle and daub walls. Uh, it is thatched roof on the outside. Um, you know, uh, uh, rustic uh, to the nth degree, rustic to, to, to the extreme. But you come inside there and there are tables, there is clearly a bar, there is there are rooms for things to socialise, um, and there are stairs at the far end, um, kind of opposite the door uh, as you come in there. It is dark inside to, you know, in this way that that's, there is still a little bit of light, you can make out where objects are, but in sh if if an area is shadowed, you can't see a damn thing into it, and it's um, you know, you, you, you'd have a hard time making out what colour stuff was. You'd have a hard time straining your eyes if you try to read inside there. Um, the room is not turned or damaged in any real way. There are kind of candles which seem to have been blown out, um, but if you were to guess, you would imagine that this had been actually closed up um, and sealed, you know, somebody had had chance to properly close up the the tavern and the bar, rather than it being raided or having been open when the um, when people left. I know I'm out patrolling the village, but later on when I get back, I'd just like to add a few candles to my character sheet. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there just the one way in, back doors, whatever? Uh, there is one main entrance and there is an entrance at the back of the kitchen um that would be used the, the, that's um broader um you know so there's a double door at the back of the kitchen that you could use for moving stock in and out however you are able to bolt that from the inside can i bolt that and then maybe like drag some things as if i'm going to barricade the front once scav gets back so we yeah have i mean there, there, there are tables and things all over the road that yeah would be really easy to just get it prepped for when he returns yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't hear anything from any of the other houses as I would travel around. So you hear nothing. However, looking into some of the houses, you are able to see, not quite in all of them, but um, signs that people have been uh, attacked and exsanguinated, uh, often at breakfast or at some kind of meal time um, around a table. In every so often, there are signs of disturbance. There are signs of, of people having chance to get weapon, but it seems more or less like much of the village was taken by surprise, very quietly, very stealthily and methodically. Um, you, you start to build a picture um, of, of effectively people having had chance to, not had chance to raise any kind of alarm, 
no yeah. one having noticed these things coming in and then moving methodically from house to house just just killing and eating the inhabitants um, on the off chance i find any sort of ranged weapon i would like to pick it up to give it yeah. to the doctor oh i wouldn't very much like that so um most of the houses will have um a spear or an axe in there but you are able to find yeah there is um, a hunting crossbow um the, the sort that would be used for picking out um you know deer or or, or kind of on, small game oh. on that note you should grab the spears anyway and put them in a cart because we can throw them yeah um, these these spears are distinctly different to um to the spears in the houses and the spears that the sathosh were using are certainly different um, got lighter spears and the ones in the houses will be so, so the sathosh eff effectively had um sharpened sticks with mm. you know with a kind of bone reinforcement there they weren't a two-piece spear whereas the um the houses have um you know a, a decent straight haft with a stone spearhead tied onto it lashed to the, to it and, and kind of mounted within the wood now I, i'm only really thinking of the doctor and the the um situation he's found himself in during the yeah. fight so that's why i'll arrive back with a crossbow and a few bolts and if the doctor yeah. doesn't want it i'll leave it on the cart i would absolutely um, love that yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah yeah um, you can grab a, um, a hunting crossbow you yeah. said yeah yeah so i'll erase it from my character sheet is that a light weapon medium weapon they are medium i think yours is medium isn't it sam no, mine's a crank but yeah it's medium yeah. i don't know if that makes a difference Crank doesn't make a difference for this purpose. It makes a difference when you start getting into things like rapid fire attacks and such. Yeah. Um, the problem is we have our um, beast of burden, which I'm happy to look after for some of the night. But it's not, you know, it the, is well, if we're essentially in, a big... there'd be a the inn has a stable that you can sleep in, yeah. and you can you can you could bring it inside and secure it so that it couldn't get away. But trying to stop a, a kind of sneaky creature from getting at it might be a bit harder. Look, I have enough um, layers of uh, winter protection surrounding my <laughs> body. Um, I'm happy to sleep in the stable. Oh, fair enough. I'll, the anine uh, itself is kind I'll of, it, it, it's warm-blooded, so sleeping next to it or what have you won't be super cold either. Yeah, and I'm sure I've slept in many a stable because mm. I'd, I'd be too cheap to pay for a bed. you love it. Yeah, and it's my thing. So um, yeah, I'm I'm not particularly like uh, on my patrol of an hour or so. I'm not particularly going through people's belongings, or I'm just saying prayers as I travel. You know, yeah. I'm the force, the forces with me, that type of thing. And then uh, I'll arrive back to the guys in half an hour or whatever. And um, yeah, it does it does appear that the the creatures you fought and the ones that got away left. You know, it appears that they that they are gone. Um, you can't find any sign as to which direction they might have gone in. Well, the authorities would have patrolled these roads. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. I love just as a kind of side thing. I love not uh, what's the word? Uh, not not fucking macabrely or anything, but I'd have counted the amount of dead. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just to have some sort of if this ever needs to be reported or if prayers for the dead have ever have to be said, it's just some sort of kind of a record of what happened here. You think the village might have somewhere in the region of, of 200 people. Jesus. And they're all gone. That you can, well, that's how many it would house. Not every house is going to have been full. I'm so. Um... But like you're talking a hundred bodies. Yeah, let's say let's say you find a hundred different, um, just 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 three different houses and things like that. It's not it's not a it's not a it's not a tiny little hamlet with kind of six or seven houses. This is yeah. the village of working working people in who will have come out to tend the farms, and it's just been been kind of raided. Well, I'll let the lads know. I know Arnold likes his numbers. Yes, I, I, I will. He'll be able to write that down. And yeah. once I get back, I'll I'll have a bite to eat or something and then I'll, I'll go to the stables letting the guys know you've been able to find food um both kind of food that was prepared the night before and also dry stock and things in the kitchen if you'd like that or otherwise you can use your own food i'll take what's here there's no uh, no point in letting it go to waste 
Indeed. Agreed. Um, one more note before we do anything. Uh, can I collect some spears, Jed? Yeah. Do you want the Sethos spears or do you want the, the domestic kind of local spears? Um, anything that could be thrown, I think. Yeah. Just um, two or three or something, just chucking a cart. Yeah. Well, how many were there that you fought? Did I say nine total and two of them got away? So you can have one each from the um, the seven that you killed. Mm. Yeah, I'll just chuck them in the cart. I'll just write yeah. that on my thing. Uh, where should I put that equipment? Seven spears in cart. Cool. I think I might make that my thing, throwing spears at stuff. Yeah, um, and so night comes in. The temperature, as promised, drops. The winds across the plains do pick up. Uh, no clouds come, but the stars do begin to twinkle above the town of Senston, the village of Senston. Um, truly, this night will feel colder than a night on this land has done for some time. The village was well established, and yet a night on the plains of Malave um, does not go uh, easily for anyone. Perhaps the town, uh, you'll notice, Gav, and, and you won't find any sign of, of armed guards or even an especially armed citizenry. As I said, the odd axe, the odd spear, the odd kind of hunting implement is the most that you'll find in terms of weaponry. And there don't appear to have been an armed presence here. Um, yeah, and they were only a day's literally well maybe a day and a half straight yeah. away from civilization so yeah exactly yeah i mean they, they, it was it was a long or a fast day for you but effectively you know you've you, you've ridden hard and you've come from the capital city to frontier where things can be kind of wiped out within that as i say not every town was full and you haven't looked in every building there is a, a largish kind of town hall that could have housed oh, yeah. official people or any kind of official guard there but um you know, the village appears to have been effectively defensiveless, in which case it is easy picking for predators like this. Um, regardless, the night itself comes in. Um, you are able to to rest. And if you have recovery rolls to make, a, you know, you've got oh, an easy opportunity to do it. You can spend, I mean, if it takes you... To do all four of your recovery rolls takes you 11 hours and, you know, 11 minutes, I suppose, just about. And you're able to do all of that while resting if you want to completely reset them. Yes. Um, you know, so you can make all, you know, up to all four or however many you've got remaining here and now. So if I make the remaining three, I roll 3d6 plus three. 3d6 plus three, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you add your tier for each roll. Uh, so I rolled two on that. So yeah, back up to four. Nice. Sorry, I, I was um, reading something Gav told me to read. Did I need to roll something? Uh, are you making recovery rolls? Oh, Roger. So you've still got two to make, and you can make those other two overnight while resting, because, you know, oh. it'll take you... 10 so yeah. that, does that make it 12 then um so you're adding your tier to each of them so yeah, yeah 10 12, 12, yeah. 12 yeah. Okay. And i'll let you do that i mean i'm not going to say you need to be there for 12 hours or 11 hours or whatever but effectively i'm going to let you guys do this overnight while resting and so once we tick those four boxes for recovery yeah. rolls we uh, it'll, you'll you'll go back to zero so wait, so we untick them Un all. untick them again and then your next recovery roll you can just take one turn cool so i made up everything so except one point. Combat for one turn, just for yeah. a one-off. Yeah, yeah. yeah so obviously, it. it's very handy in combat to have that first yeah. one available. Yeah, because yeah. you can just do it. Yeah, I used all mine and yeah, I got all mine back. So you're one shy of full gaff, is that right? Yeah. 
but you used yours a lot so that was you know oh, I, 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 I think that's reasonable you guys can see the difference points. that effort makes and that it is there to be used i hope yes yes just need to figure out when's a good idea to use it when isn't yeah i think i used it when i mean i bothered yeah I don't mind telling you guys the difficulty. I mean, it's pretty easy. You'll start to work it out pretty quickly. The the difficulty that it takes were to those beat guys creatures, yeah. like difficulty three or something. They were level three, so it was a nine yeah. to beat them as standard. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Because I, um, I hit on a nine, I think actually. Yeah. So because your whip is a light weapon, you should have been hitting on a six. I don't know if I played that. Oh, okay. Every so light time, weapons but... eases it one tier. Right. Yeah. Yes, but it does less damage. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you can always just drop a few points on extra damage. Yeah. Yeah. If that's the thing you want. Yeah. 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 Okay. And having played a lot of these type of games where there's an economy not of actions but of like the pools that you spend. Just spend them. Yeah, yeah they're there to be spent. Especially when the numbers are as high as they are in front of us. Yeah. Just yes. fucking blow them. Blow them way more than you think you should, you know, because yeah. yep. that 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 final showdown never comes, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna blow oh. everything down to three points, and then have the boss. Yeah, and the, <laughs> and exactly, but that that makes it even more uh, exciting. Yeah, and I'm gonna do one more thing with you guys having having made a discovery, made your first proper discovery with a little bit of exploration here. I'm gonna give you a point of XP each. Hey. Oh. Um, the fact, Jed, earlier on that yeah. I said bring on a GM intrusion. Yeah. Am I due an extra point to just expect? Uh, if you roll a one, no. Rolling a one means I get a free GM intrusion. I'm not going to kind of. Um, oh, that's I'm... what that was. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that's why if you if you look on your Numenera dice, the one that the the table has given you for free, the one will sometimes say GM. Okay. Yeah. Um, and get you. Yes, yeah, so I can see on this yellow one here. There's a GM written on the side of it, um, and that is yeah. If you roll a one, I get a free GM intrusion, and if I just decide I'm going to give you one, then I give you a, an XP and one to give to a friend. I see. Yeah. Which in a table of three gets kind of awkward. That's fine. Yeah. I, I gave one to Gav last time, so I gave one to Gex this time. Yeah. So, of what? XP. Oh, XP. Yeah. Oh, have three. They all have different icons on. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to run through you fellas. Right, it's ten to ten, or it's it's kind of quarter to ten. I, I don't want to play that much longer. Is there anything else you fellas would like to do tonight before? Well, we've I think waking up is a good idea for the next yeah. session. So, yeah. Uh... Yeah, we've stowed all the bodies. We've collected the spears. We've found a secure place to sleep. We've secured the creature. The uh, yeah. Archibald were pretty good. Uh, I just RP fluff. Like I said, I'll be writing down everything that's just happened, yeah. taking the numbers that was given to me from Gav. Keeping your cat warm and, and padded. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you know, saying smeg a lot. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy. To, I think that's a good place to leave it. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the the night passes not too badly. Even in the stable, you are actually able to get quite comfortable. These houses, although they may be rustic, are well made. They keep the wind off you well. They keep the night's chill from you. Although you, you haven't lit a fire, um, you are able to wake in the morning feeling well rested. And you are up with the dawn, which, as I've said, this time of year is not incredibly early. Um, but you are, it is early enough for you to feel a bit of cold in your toes. Um, the first little bits of bird song are coming in as the, the what birds remain on the plain um, flit overhead and, and land. You open the door to the inn or arise from the stable and find some of those birds have found the Sathosh that you left in the road and are pecking at them treating them uh, with the same sympathy that they showed to the former residents of Senston. Um, you haven't heard anything. You're, you're just a little bit too far from the from the main road south, and so you haven't heard much um, coming on from there. But you've made very good progress for the day, uh, probably shortening things so that um, one more strong day on the road and you'll be in the hills before I am and then from there, it's one good quick descent um, down into the next, down into the city that is your destination. 
Um, cool. So you can you can get your your steed up and saddled, get things there and ready, and um, we will rejoin next week as you rejoin the main road and the flow of morning traffic heading uh, across Milave. Um, Excellent. Just before, or oh yeah, yeah, okay, I'm in a different room. <clears throat> no, no, it's fine. You sure. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say was I was reading about XB and how to spend it, and yeah, one of the things is setting up player plots. Yeah. So, um, one of the connections from myself and um the doctor, um, Arnzak was that my mentor. My mentor wrote books on historical locations that were said yep. to contain lores of old and stuff like that, knowledge of, of the ancient times and the other worlds. And I was going to put into play through the telling of tales over campfires and dinners yep. and while on the road. Um, for one point of XP, I was going to essentially set Gex um, a player quest oh. to to find some of these places. Oh. So I haven't... Um, I will have told uh, dislocated tales, as in sections of different tales, theming a, a thread. So, like things like along the lines of, you know, the birthing rituals of of these people are surprisingly like the birthing rituals of these people, even though they're, you know, a thousand leagues away, and they would have never have met. And you know, basically, when I tell a story, it jumps around left and right. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's not like a history of a village. It's a history of a, of a concept around that, a theme rather than around a subject. Yeah, that has uh, permeated different um, uh, areas and villages and peoples at a different time. So while I would have grown up around this girl, Nave, Ingwalds, whatever that settlement is, yeah. I'm thinking I'm thinking that's where my monastery as such is, but like. You know, I would have traveled basically all over the Steadfast yeah. or or the Pythirian Empire and Malave and possibly a little bit of Akuan as well. Um, so I'll be telling these type of tales, but I will always be mentioning back to the, the truth and the wisdom of something from my monastery and something that my mentor would have told stories to me about. And that this, this perks up... Um, uh, Dr. Hector's mm. interests, and if he wants that XP, he's got to yes. he's got to find some hidden hidden lore connected nice. to something. My back story. We okay. can come up with some more details next session. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm happy to do some of that in the Discord as well. But doing that in character will be be you know in session will be totally fine. It'd be quite nice. Cool. Cool. Or That's if fun. it doesn't, it doesn't have to be up the mountains. It can be on our way, or in Ion, or you know, whatever Jed decides. Because obviously, going to the mountains is a bit of a detour. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, not during this adventure, but you know, to sit and say, yeah, if we if we come away from this and say, yeah, actually, that that was really fun. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to you guys and say what we would like to play and how we'd like to play it. Right. Well, I'd like to have this point of XP and the concept of player set adventures in play yeah. during this 10 sessions or whatever we play. Okay. So sure. maybe, maybe I'll have a chat to you off camera as such, Jed. And we Please, can, yeah. And we can come up with some sort of way something to spend to, the six bit. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Cool. I, okay. I, have, I have a couple of ideas for, I have quite a specific idea for something that would perk. Um, Brother Elias's interest in terms of kind of folk cults and 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 rituals and things like that that I was going to do next session. Um, right. Well, maybe that could prompt my storytelling to tell Hector that will yeah. prompt his interest in something further. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's 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 quite good. Um, the thing that we did earlier on in the session, um, getting around it was was one of the solutions kind of you know there, there were a few different ways for you to deal with that and i think going going around it was going to yield the least but there was there was quite a good discovery to be made in there as well yeah um, the box yeah, yeah. Uh, but i know that you were in a rush as characters so 
Yes. Oh, I, I will definitely be interested in revisiting that if we happen to go back to yeah. see the guy. Mm. Which I'm assuming is on the cards. Yeah. Yeah, should we have more money to collect, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool, Jed. That was great. Yeah. Cool. That was a lot better than... Not a lot better, sorry, that's mean. I mean, I felt more connected to the world, like I was saying last week, that I don't know what the world is like. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I felt a lot more connected to it this time. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to come back to that and give you more of a sense of, A, what the fields and things will look like, what I was seeing with that. I mean, I talked about the differentiation of fencing and, and the ruins of yeah. buildings of just being in fields and things and the like that. different animals and... Yeah. Yeah. That, that, was, that was a good question to ask with, with, with the app humans there and how common these things were. The, the, the sense, as I say, is that this is a world in which you do, you do, not even can, but do encounter monsters, encounter mutants, encounter creatures that are um, not safe to be around. It is wild world. Um, and also living in, as I say, in the in amongst the bones and the skeletons of former civilizations, in amongst old worlds, as, again, you know. Um, and I don't want to say too much more on that, but hopefully over the next couple of sessions you'll get to discover more of that. Mm. Yeah, that's great. I, also, I read the uh, the Amber Monolith earlier today as well. That was, yeah. that was good. Oh, that, that, I yeah. That. yeah, I forgot that as well. Fucking... That's obviously up here to the to the north of the map where that is, but it, yeah. it's it's quite yeah. nice it's in terms cool of just yeah, it's a nice little story. It's a nice little fragment of it, and the the, the feeling of exploration that's in that I quite like. I bet you somebody's put a YouTube video together of that. A dramatic reading. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was great. I felt a lot more at home in that world. And, you know, the more you play, the more you develop your character and find. I'm glad. Thanks, fellas. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, there is. Any yeah. to stream? Yes. Before I forget, um, because we'll probably forget, I'm going to put my flex skill point in knowledge of the new Monera, and okay. unless I say otherwise, we will just default that that's what I've put it in. Default that it's there for the time being, okay. For the day, yeah. yeah. yeah um, there's just... a few readings of the Amber Monolith out there. Yeah, there's a couple on YouTube, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, there's one by Monty Cook. So Monty, Monty Cook is the... Is it him reading it? Yeah. Oh, so he's the author behind the whole book, so that'll be fine. I think he's dead now. Is he? I think oh. he died last year, or the year before. I've put flex skill the num nums <laughs> teed in the num nuts. Mm. Just so we will remember. Yeah, <laughs> fine. Have you have you put that on your sheet, Sam? I'm good to save. Yes, that? yes. Save away. Yes, we'll remember that next time. I totally forgot about the cat as well. Oh, totally, Matt. We should cybernetic the shit out of that cat. Um, well, the, the, I remember now because I just totally forgot from the character creation session that I took linked senses and the cat for a reason, so that I could sense things as the cat to make so the cat you're, you're a like, shouty thing. You're half of the crew of Red Dwarf. Yes, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can be Lister. <laughs> uh. So we're okay to exit out. Um, yeah, yeah. Going, going at Crichton makes more sense for Gav, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> then I'll be Lister. <laughs> yeah, but I, I took that for a specific reason because you know, like I don't know if we're coming to situations. Maybe we need to get in a building and we need to know what's in it, just so I can put the cat in and link my senses oh, to it. We're explorers more than yeah murder hobos. Then hopefully, yeah, the cat's going to be a great yeah um, yeah. yeah yeah asset. That's the word. Yeah, that was cool. Looking forward to next week. Yeah. I'll remember not to throw it into combat. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, that's probably yeah. otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, For, uh, I know one, these guys are tier damage. one, but I mean, like, <laughs> his spear is like three points of damage and they're fucked. When you yeah. read out its stats, <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, three okay. points now. So I'm pretty sure oh, those things three. had already hit for three points. We knew at that stage that they did three points of damage. So it's oh, like, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to go to you. Yeah. I was just trying yeah. to play the cat. What the cat would, you know, what a cat would do. Well, with this cats do do that, don't they? But yeah. The cat is going to get up and hiss. It's kind of. 
I feel like it should have like a speed defense bonus or something because you fucking try and catch a cat that's angry. Yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> anyway, that's what the rules say. 